Broncos go against the Cincinnati Bengals. Today's game is brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? By Michelob, one smooth and mellow taste tells you that some things speak for themselves. And by Burroughs Corporation, the question isn't who's bigger, it's who's better. Good afternoon, everyone. Don Cricky with Bob Crumpy on opening day in Denver. We're ready to go. Don, uh, the Bengals have won the toss. They'll receive to start this 84 season. Rich Carlos to our left. Free agent out of the University of Cincinnati, ready to kick it off for the Broncos. David Verzer and John Simmons are back for Cincinnati. Spinning kick. Verzer, a flyer, takes it at the six. And a good special team play. He saved a lot of yardage on the return because Verzer had an open track. There is a penalty marker down. Aaron Smith came down on the tackle and also on the play was Jesse Miles. No penalty marker down. What are you looking at, coach? Just looking at the offense here. See, this is a very multiple offense at the Bengals run. No telling how they're going to come out, even though that's who we'll list as the starters. Munoz, as good as there is in football. The left tackle at 280 pounds. Anderson coming up. A great summer. Throwing deep. Going for Collinsworth. And it's almost intercepted by Mike Harden. Don Anderson got absolutely leveled by Rulon Jones. This Denver Bronco defense has historically not gotten to the quarterback. And one of the things we want to feature today is that big offensive line of the Cincinnati Bengals. Watch to the left of your screen inside the off throw offensive tackle of the Bengals, Anthony Munoz, and Rulon Jones kissed him right in the chest. So they tried to burn the Bengals deep on the first play from scrimmage. And now Anderson, who completed just under 72% of his passes in preseason, goes second and 10 from his 16. Into Brooks, there's a strike up the middle, and the ball is lost at the 38 yard line. Turning into the ball was the veteran Isaac Curtis. Looked like it was right there, so Anderson and the Bengal offense face long yardage. John, I think that ball was tipped by Dennison, the linebacker, 55. Chavis, Carter, and Rulon Jones across the defensive front of the Broncos. The great Randy Gratishar now retired. They've had to put some new people inside, Dennison and Busick. And the best player in the defense, Louis Wright, all-pro cornerback, is not starting. He is in uniform. It is third down and ten now for Cincinnati. Louis Wright's in the game now. Got practice to play the last week. Here's a throw in the flat. It goes out to Charles Alexander, who take, makes a turn up field and gets across the 25-yard line. So it looks like enough for a first down from him. Well, the Bengals are starting out, throwing the ball all over the place. This is not a very conservative offense. Sam White, for years, a player for the Cincinnati Bengals and coached under Bill Walsh, and he likes to throw the football. He likes to throw it down the field. He has great confidence in Ken Anderson, and this is a, an offense that uses an awful lot of formations, and he'll throw it to ev every eligible receiver before the day's over. First and ten Bengals. Bengal coaches say they could run from as many as 50 offensive formations. Anderson has a man open his tight end. ML Harris had to go to the wrong side for the ball, so it'll be second down and ten. Thrown behind him. There you saw exactly what the Denver defense for about the last six or seven years has tried to do. They really haven't had that good a pass rush, and they like to blitz. Watch all the movement up front. A game between the nose tackle and the defensive end. Jackson, 57, coming from the left. It hurries Anderson ever so slightly. Thrown behind ML Harris. ML Harris, though, was wide open. A blown coverage. There's a big game for Dan Marino and the Dolphins. Five touchdown passes for the second-year player, and upset as James Brooks runs the ball hard on second and ten. Coming into the right side of the Denver Bronco defense, Reuben Carter, the middle guard, ran over and knocked him down. Brooks Trump adds a whole new dimension to this Cincinnati team. They have the greatest backfield speed now they've had since the days of Essex Johnson. Sure, they made the trade with San Diego, gave up Pete Johnson, a one-dimensional ball player, could run over anybody in the game. There's another big score, 30-27, Frisco over Detroit. And in Brooks, they got a multi-dimensional player. Brooks is all over the field. Now he's lined up on the left side as a flanker. Given this Bronco defense a lot to look at, here's the throw, and it's complete to M.L. Harris. He's ahead for a first down, lost the handle. The ball goes out of bounds, and it will maintain. The Bengals will keep it. 14-yard gain on the play. You can see the problem with the formation. James Brooks has a wide receiver. Collinsworth in the backfield, 
And obviously, the defense is going to have to sort out exactly uh, who is who. And uh, that certainly affects the coverage. But ML Harris here taking advantage of a missed assignment by someone. And whoa, lost the handle on that one. But another Bengal first down. First down out to the 49-yard line. There's no score in the first quarter. Now you see Brooks out wide to the right. He's the flanker at the top to the run. Alexander takes it up the middle, and the Bronco defense knocks him down. But there is a gain of about three yards on the play. So the Bengals take it over midfield. Green Bay comes back and beats the St. Louis Cardinals in a tight ball game. The ex-coach of the Bengals, Forrest Gregg, opening with a win back home in Green Bay. Must have had some defense today by the Packers. Jim Ryan, a good linebacker for the Denver Broncos, number 50, is now on the field. He, like Louis Wright, had been hurt. Wright was in for only a play. Now he's out. You see the numbers, second and six. Brooks runs wide. That change of pace move, he comes down to the 40-yard line. He knows this stadium well, played here every year with the Chargers. Very gifted athlete. Uh, it's well documented his uh, success at Auburn, keeping some very, very good running backs in front of him blocking. Brooks has got great acceleration. He is a precise pattern runner coming out of San Diego. And whatever his problems were with the, the San Diego Chargers off the field, they have not surfaced in Cincinnati. He's been a willing uh, contributor to this offense. I don't think he ever had any problem, problems off the field. I think he had a problem fumbling. But he'll still do that, Don. Third and inches now for the Bengals. Looking for the first down. They go to the power strip. Larry Cantrell at over 250 pounds doesn't get a thing. As the free safety, Steve Foley, came up and stuffed him along with uh, two linebackers. Rookie head coach Sam White's first big decision here in the 84 regular season. Now this, 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 this Denver defense has always been tough. They come up with a big play. They'll let you get yards, and then all of a sudden, they'll shut you down. Joe Collier, their assistant head coach, is one of those defensive geniuses, and the, the new coach of the Bengals decides to punt, take the conservative way out. Well, playing what the computer says to play, the percentages, Pat McAnally comes out to punt. Didn't have a great preseason, but he was really unloading, warming up here today. Sent him at 70 yards down the field. Zach Thomas, the lone man back for the Broncos. There is Pat McAnally. Ninth year from Harvard. Gets off a long punt, angling it. But it's going to carry into and out of the end zone on the fly. And so on the touchback, the ball comes out to the Broncos 20-yard line, and they go on offense for the first time. 12 minutes and 17 seconds to play in the first quarter and no score. Join us next week for another NFL doubleheader on NBC. Start the day at 12.30 Eastern time with NFL 84 and host Bob Costas. Then great NFL action begins in our first game. Some of you will see Walter Payton and the Chicago Bears host John Elway and the Denver Broncos. Then in the second half, some of you will see the Seattle Seahawks go against San Diego. It's next Sunday on NBC Sports. Elway and the Broncos, first and 10 at their 20. Winder cuts up. to the 39-yard line, a 19-yard gain. On this Bengal defense that the Denver Broncos are facing, ranked number one last year against pass and run, the last back to gain 100 yards in a regular season game was James Brooks in 1982. But as you can see here, they strung out the defense, and Winder, an excellent up-the-field runner, picks up a lot of yards. Big psychological lift to Denver right off the bat. First and 10, Reggie Williams finally ran him down. 19-yard gain, Elway on first down, right back to Winder, same play. It takes the read and cuts wide and gets to midfield. He's close to yet another first down. So Winder on consecutive runs has gained almost 30 yards. Got 10 on that play. They're running away from the tight end. And what that does is put the free safety in support. Generally have the strong safety there because he's an excellent tackler. And what they're trying to do is with that H-back, and we'll develop that story as the day goes on, Sawyer, they're running away from him, which is the short side of the defense. To simplify the H-back, he's number 83 coming over. Usually he's a tight end that goes in motion, gets a running jump on the block. First and 10, no score in the game. Elway looks to throw from midfield, gunning it long. He's got Sampson going for the ball, and it's broken up. Good defensive play by Lewis Breed in the left corner. Elway, like Kenny 
Anderson is counterpart with the Bengals is a definite threat to run the ball. Good coverage, as you said, by Louis Breeden. And uh, this is uh, a pass that I rather surprised at. Generally, John Elway in the past has thrown the ball extremely hard. It appears he's learned how to throw that ball with some touch, give the receiver a chance to catch it. Looked like Jimmy Turner almost had an interception, the strong safety for the Bengals. Now it's going to be second down and 10. Denver with the ball. No score in the first quarter. Don Quickie with Bob Trumpy and sold out. Mile High Stadium, Denver, Colorado. Elway going to gun it again. Here comes the blitz. Elway on the run, looking back. Oh, it's green. through the preseason has used an awful lot of roll up one because of Elway's ability to throw on the run and two because they lack a little confidence in their offensive line but this is well disguised by Elway watch the way he throws it going straight back almost makes the completion <laughs> Reggie Williams tackles him I can't tell you why that's not interference there's a forward pass behind the line of scrimmage huh? that makes a difference okay well no flag no foul, no foul, as they no say. Pass no pass interference behind the line of scrimmage. Thank they you are. very much. Bengal fans aren't going to buy that. It brings up third down and ten in a scoreless game. First quarter. Now they go to the shotgun set. Do the Denver Broncos. Jesse Miles in the game, 39. Elway throwing a hard ball downfield. It's caught by Sampson. Lance Sampson, second year from San Diego State, turns out, makes a 13-yard gain, and gets a first down. Don, the Bengals employed a six defensive backs, four-man pass rush, and one linebacker, and it appears to be man-on-man -man coverage all the way, and Elway can gun it, and he certainly did there. The offensive people, they change frequently in a very complex Denver offense. Much of the Dallas system brought in here. Offensive line, the best is the center, Bill Bryan. He's even been voted most valuable offensive player by his teammates in the past. First and ten, Denver. Lots of throwing in the first quarter. Broncos with their deepest penetration. Elway in the flat, another strike to Sampson, who's deployed all over the field. Wide out, flanker either side. And again, he comes up with a football knocked out of bounds by Louis Breeden. So far, the Broncos have to be encouraged. Not yardage gained, but choices made by John Elway. Donnie's uh, made excellent choices so far. The defenders for the Bengals, Eddie Edwards and Brown are the veteran pass rushers. The linebackers. LeClaire gone, Dinkle no longer here. The defensive secondary, Ken Riley. for Denver. Winder looks for a hole, finds one, pops up the ball, and the Bengals have it. We'll see it. It's going to come back. They whistle the cat, but it's Bengals' ball. Like a smart guy, he's taking it the distance. Robert Jackson goes into the end zone, waits for the bad news. That, well, you got good news and bad news. You get the ball, but you can't run it. Once again, you saw Sawyer, the H-back, as he's called in Denver in motion. Watch him go right down on the nose tackle. It's a trap. Let's see who coughs it, how it comes loose. Well, it just seems to slip out of his hand. Rick Rosano, 51 on the hit, but it wasn't a, a real tough hit. Picked up by Jackson. And first and 10 Bengals. So the Bengals finally stop the Broncos drive, but Elway and the Denver offense looking very effective. Their first possession. No score in the game. First and 10 Cincinnati. The middle goes Charles Alexander. Denver, historically a very difficult team to run on under Joel Collier. Their defense is as in tune and in sync as any you'll ever see. They really play together. Doesn't matter who the players are, they all seem to fit together. Collier, one of the real defensive geniuses in this game. It's a team defense, too, Don. Uh, you sacrifice this guy or that guy so that someone else can make a tackle, and that used to be the responsibility of Randy Gratishar. Now, Busick, the linebacker for the Broncos, must fill that gap. It is a beautiful day in Denver as second down and four comes up for the Bengals. Alexander cut down a great play by a guy who's made it for years, Tom Jackson. Action Jackson. Another thing that the Joe Collier defense of Denver does is slant. And on that particular time, you saw 
Tom Jackson in there at about the center. And it was obviously slanting to the strong side of the formation. Jackson told me before the game drop, he said, it's 11 years. You think I'd be able to sleep the night before an open, but I couldn't <laughs> sleep a week. <laughs> Up all night, but ready to play. 9.50 to play, first quarter, clock running, no score on the board. There's Louie right back in. He's coming in and out, playing with a badly strained calf muscle. But a great player. Third and four, Collinsworth. Chris Collinsworth wide open. He's out across the 45, out to midfield, and down to the 49-yard line of Denver. A 23-yard gain on the play. Final scores coming in from the east. San Diego buries Les Steckel and the Minnesota Vikings 42-13. That's really cranked it up today. The Giants hold on to beat their longtime rivals, the Eagles, at Giant Stadium. Don, a comment on that last play. You mentioned Louis Wright. He was covering James Brooks. Chris Collinsworth was in the backfield. It was a mismatch. Wide receiver on linebacker. Well, they got the mismatch, and they made the connection. Anderson to Collinsworth. End off. Alexander spins off a tackler, and on first and ten, he carries down to the 47-yard line. Alexander, 6'1", 226 pounds, and still one of the fastest Bengals. From the... Uh, Denver Bronco bench. Uh, Steve Wilson started today because Louis Wright has got a pulled calf muscle. There he is in the lineup now. He, he's not 100%, but Steve Wilson, I believe, has a hip pointer. So now Louis Wright has to play. Second down and seven arises for the Bengals in the scoreless game. Kenny Anderson in his 14th year dumps it off again. Alexander puts his head down, and Cincinnati has another first down in their deepest penetration. They're down to the 36-yard line of Denver. That was good for 11 yards. Now, this is the type of offense that Sam Weiss wants. He's thrown the ball to Collinsworth. He's thrown the ball to Curtis. He's thrown the ball to the tight end and to all three running backs they've had in the game. Spread it around. Years ago, he used to throw it to Trumpet. Wasn't he your first quarterback? With yes, the he was. That's exactly right. That was a long time ago. I think we wore helmets back then. There's been some questions. It's now first down and 10 Cincinnati at the 36-yard line. Turning wide is James Brooks. Busick pursues him. A good hit. Harden came up. Mike Harden, 31, along with the inside linebacker Busick. Brooks gets ahead for a short yardage. Now there's that Joe Collier defense. Watch the way that Busick, right on the top of your screen, is able to pursue down the line. See, the idea is the guys in front, the outside linebacker and the defensive lineman, strip away those offensive linemen. Busey can run down the line of scrimmage to make the tackle. For 10 years, Randy Gratishar did that like nobody else ever did. Brooks goes off. He may have... Yeah, blame him. He'll, he'll be back. Jar on his leg there. He got four where they spotted the ball, so it's second down and six now for Cincinnati. No score in the first quarter. Anderson's got time. He can run. He doesn't like to. 35 with surgical knees and he gets rid of the ball. They call for grounding. That's what he did, but he did it legally and there's no problem. Well, the Denver Bronco defense is getting through to Ken Anderson. And that's one of the things we want to watch very closely, how this mammoth offensive line of the Cincinnati Bengals handles the defensive line of the Denver Broncos. If uh, the Broncos have a concern, it's that mismatch. Not so much this defensive lineman, Don, but they've got linebackers who None of them weigh over 225 pounds. No, they're not a big defense at all. And Cincinnati offensively up front is a huge football team. Montoya, 280. Wilson, 280. Munoz at 280. These are blasters, and they're all great players. Collinsworth making a move on the ball, but he's covered very nicely by Steve Wilson, who had a good preseason. Wilson, 45, trots back after doing his job well, stopping the Bengals on a third down drive. Now Jim Breach comes out. He'll try a long field goal. This is excellent coverage here. Uh, Collinsworth is a young man with great speed. All they're trying to do is just throw the ball up and have him run under it. Anderson just threw it too far. Anderson in the history of the National Football League has the lowest interception percentage. That's the hallmark of a great player. I think he's 48 completions away from 2,500, which would make him just one of just four quarterbacks in the history of the game to have that. Breach trying a 50-yard field goal. His career longest is 51. In a line drive that wasn't close. And so the Broncos get the ball for a second time with good field position. 
tough for our kickers to kick off of that skinned infield. This is where the Denver Bears play. AAA affiliate of the Chicago White Sox. And of course, their season's still going on, just about to end. Soon they'll uh, they'll put grass on here. And it's tough to kick off that skin part. Next Friday, you have a ticket to the hottest games in town when NBC Sports presents primetime baseball. Some of you will see the Chicago Cubs going against the New York Mets, one of the tightest races in baseball. Others will see Reggie Jackson. He's going for number 500. The Angels and the White Sox. That's next Friday night here on NBC Sports. Right now, it's first and 10 for the Broncos. Scoreless game in the first quarter. Elway gives to Winder, not a thing. Mangled defense got a low to him. Tim Crumry, the middle guard, hit him. So it's going to be second down, and they might have lost a half yard. Cubs continue to do well on the road, leading Atlanta 2-1 in the seventh inning. They're having a foot baseball celebration in Chicago as the Cubs, who've not won since 45. Mets chasing them, but having problems. Now tied with San Diego in the ninth inning at New York. Clock running. Six minutes and 43 seconds to play. First quarter and no score. Both teams have moved the ball well, throwing it. First time the Broncos had it. Coughed it up on a fumble when they were down close. Elway looking very sharp. In the flat. And Sampson is turning out on the corners and catching the ball for Denver. Now you saw the movement at the line of scrimmage. Double motion by the same guy. And basically what they were trying to do is isolate Sampson on Ray Horton out on the wide side of the field. And it certainly worked. John Elway with some impressive early game numbers, Trump, with 6.27 to go in the... We thought he caught it. He dropped it. No, he did drop oh, it. Oh, I gave it to him. I thought he had it. That's what he should have had. Let's look at it that way. That was right on the money. Here's Butch Johnson, number 86. Played most of his career at Dallas. Was with Houston briefly this summer. Played for Dan Reeves at Dallas. Shotgun formation is five men run deep patterns. Elway stands in and throws, and it's incomplete. So on third and eight, the Broncos come up empty. They'll have to punt the ball for a first time. Talking to Dan Reeves before the game, Trump, he said of John Elway, the big difference is how comfortable he is. He knows the offense, and he really feels he can deliver. And even more importantly, maybe his teammates feel the same. Last year, there was some question about him being a rookie and how much he could do. Now they all know that Elway's the man. They have no choice. They uh, traded away Steve DeBerg, and it's Elway or it's nobody. Behind Elway are Gary Kubiak and Scott Bruner. Bruner from the Giants had the dubious distinction of being the lowest-rated quarterback in the league last year. Believe it or not, Elway was second last. That's going to change because Elway has the goods. Here's Chris Norman, a rookie punter for South Carolina. John Simmons is Zach Deep for the Bengals. High punt. Got the good hang time, but not a lot of distance. It does take Simmons back to his 18-yard line where he still catches the ball. His first NFL punt good for 47 yards. And just about made above Mile High Stadium. It's an excellent start for the young man. Really carries, doesn't it? Look oh, like yeah. a nine iron shot, and then Wynn got it. And so now the Bengals take over on offense for the third time in the first quarter. No points are on the board with 6.14 to play. This basically is the way Denver likes to play. This is a turnover defense. They try to get turnovers, and all of a sudden their offense has got first and 30 for a touchdown. And they'll be very patient, offensively and defensively, until that opportunity arises. First and 10, Anderson hands off. Power run into the right side of the Denver defense. Gets three or four. Alexander called on again. Great blocker in addition to his ability to run the ball, Charles Alexander. Some thought he'd be one of the great runners ever to come into the league coming out of LSU because he had 4-4 speed on 225 pounds. Two things that hurt him. One, they started him at fullback. Pete Johnson got the ball, and two, and LSU has lined up nine yards deep, and the throws, it's about six. And that difference in speed really has uh, been a big factor. The tailwind with that running start. Here's Brooks running now, and second down and five, and he gets across the 25. Out to about the 26-yard line, where an inside linebacker, Rick Dennison, knocked him down. Beautiful the way a running back like uh, James Brooks can set up a block. He jumped inside the offensive lineman, stopped the defense for just a minute, then went back around outside and picked up another two or three yards. That's something that the Bengals have, have sorely needed for a number of years. Dan Reeves, he knows opening day success. He said at Dallas, you never lost an opening day. He was there 16 years as a player and coach, and they were 16-0 and on opening day. Third and two from a power 
formation. Anderson takes and throws, and there's too much on that ball for tight end Don Kern. A rookie from Arizona State trying to get the ball, and now Broncos could get good field position as McAnally's back in to punt for a second time. Last year, the Bengals were excellent in third down conversions. So far in this game, they have not been very successful. There's a major upset trump at Three River Stadium, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Kansas City, losing its starting quarterback, Bill Kenny, late in the preseason with a thumb fracture. He's back under the great Penn State player, Todd Blackledge, today in his second year, and upsets the Steelers at Pittsburgh. McAnally unloads. Tremendous punt. Thomas back inside his 20. Good special teams coverage by the Bengals at the 25-yard line. 55-yard punt by Pat McAnally at an excellent time. Zach Thomas comes off, missing from the Denver roster also is the retired Rick Upchurch, who was certainly one of the great punt returners in this league for a lot of years. I'm not sure you can replace Rick Upchurch when it comes to returning punts. He was in a class all by himself. 4.41 to play in the first quarter, and still no score on the board. Elway sends his wide receivers out. Sampson, who's been tough on the right flank. Watson, his favorite receiver up at the top of your screen. First and ten. Here's a swing pass out to the eighth back, and Sawyer takes it across the 30-yard line. This is Don Crickey with Bob Trumpy, Mile High Stadium, Denver, Colorado. Welcoming all of you who've been watching the Kansas City upset of the Steelers. Here in the first quarter, we've had both teams move the ball with good passing by the opposing quarterbacks, Elway of the Broncos and Anderson of the Bengals, but there's no score on the board. Denver in possession of the ball now with second down and four coming up. Elway using a very diverse offense. Lots of different people coming in and out in different formations. Winder, his best runner, turns up field. Sammy Winder gets ahead for a Bengal, a Bronco first down, and he is out across the 40. There's a 10-yard game. Winder weaving his way. Robert Jackson, the free safety for Cincinnati, knocked him down. Excellent job by this offensive line of the Denver Broncos of at least keeping contact with the defensive players. There you see the tight end. Winder one's right by Reggie Jackson. Uh, excuse me. Reggie Williams. You just mentioned Reggie Jackson. No, he doesn't wear number 57, does he? We got a Robert Jackson in there, though, for the Bengals, and Winder Trump having a big first half. 46 yards and just five carries. Here he goes for some more. Winder rocking out the backfield is finally knocked down by the strong safety, Jimmy Turner. But he gets more yardage as Sammy Winder at 5'11, 203 pounds, third year from Southern Miss. Credited with a nine-yard game. Worth repeating for the fans that just joined us, uh, the Bengals' defense, number one last year in the NFL, and the last running back to have a 100-yard day against them was James Brooks in 1982. Well, Sammy Winder is working on one. He has 55 yards and six carries. First quarter. Bob running 245 to play in it, second down and one. He gave him nine in the last carry. Elway with the rifle shot for the strike deception, cutting in on the Bengal defender, Breeden. The first down, a 14-yard gain, a perfect throw by Elway. So far, John Elway has made the right choices, and watch the ability here. He doesn't even set up to get this ball down the field. It's up there, ready to go, and wham! He fires it like a rocket shot, and it's accurate. Boy, what, what marvelous talents that young man has. Now four of eight for 40 yards. One drop that would have been a big game. Elway spreads his offense out now. Which Johnson is back in. He is at the lower portion of the screen. John Elway takes a look long. Fires down a great interception by Glenn Cameron. Inside linebacker for the Bengals. So twice now in the first quarter, the Bengals stop Denver drives with turnovers. That same play to the other side. Puts Johnson in motion. Sampson on the slant pattern. And Elway, I don't think, made the wrong choice here. It was just excellent coverage by Glenn Cameron and also an outstanding catch. Second turnover for the Bengals. First and 10 the other way. John Elway has been moving the Broncos, but twice now they penetrated the Cincinnati side of the field. The Broncos have lost the ball on turnovers. The last a tremendous interception by linebacker Glenn Cameron. So now the Bengals have it back in a scoreless game. 
First down, the Bengals go to the run to their big back. Running the ball is Larry Kinnebrew, second year from Tennessee State. They like having a 250-pound fullback. He uh, broke his leg last year in the last game of the season. Came to camp about 30 pounds overweight. Atlanta, that's another upset. New Orleans was favored. Atlanta losing one of the great players in the league in William Andrews for the season. Nonetheless, behind Barkowski, they come back and win. The Bears are rolling. Even Tampa Bay in the opener at Soldier Field. James Brooks on second down and five has trouble. A good defensive play resulted in a barely a yard gain for Denver as those Broncos converge. Now we have a moment. Let's go to NFL 84 in New York. Back in New York, it was a big day for Phil Sims out at the Meadowlands. Here is the fourth touchdown on the afternoon for Mr. Sims, the 16-yarder to Bob Johnson, and the Giants have beaten the Eagles by a score of 28 to 27. Phil Sims, a quarterback with great ability, kind of a hard luck story in his career with a lot of injuries, having a big day for the Giants. We've got two hard throwing quarterbacks going today. Smith in the center, Dave Remington. Uh, the Bengals spread the defense out as best they could by formation. And then ran Charles Alexander right up the gut. And that's one of the problems that Denver, Denver will face all day long. You just don't have any way of guessing what the Bengals are going to be in next formation-wise. We're going to have a water break right now as the first quarter draws to a close with no numbers on the board. So at the end of the first quarter of play, it's the Cincinnati Bengals nothing, the Denver Broncos nothing will be back. The first quarter statistics, Bengals had the ball longer, but no net gain on the scoreboard. It's nothing, nothing now. Cincinnati with good field position to start the second quarter, going with the wind at Kenny Anderson's back. Bengals had the ball first and 10 at the 49-yard line of Denver. Bounce it off. Kinnebrew has the ball. And Mecklenburg, a second-year linebacker and a big one, runs him down for a very short game. Broncos converging very well on the ball. Good pursuit. Don, we've spoken about how uh, complex the Denver Bronco defense is with different formations. Behind it, their coverage is very simple. Uh, blitz man-to-man. -man. Other than that, it's just simply a straight zone. They don't do anything fancy. They don't want mental mistakes. They try to confuse the offense at the line of scrimmage by alignment. Watch number 77, Mecklenburg. Now he's down in the line of scrimmage. Is he a defensive lineman or a linebacker? And that goes to Brooks, and he breaks through. James Brooks taking some hard licks. But he gets ahead on a second down and almost seven play and gets close to a first down. He got one. 77, Mecklenburg, creates confusion. And the problem is, is that you must first identify him. Is he a linebacker or is he a defensive lineman? And that can change the blocking scheme of the Cincinnati Bengals offense. 77 Mecklenburg is going to be in the game a lot today just to create that moment's indecision at the line of scrimmage. He's an hombre is what he is at 6'6", 260. Certainly out of the mold of Denver linebackers. takes a look, throws, Collinsworth has the ball, and lose one tackle, but not the second. And it was Mecklenburg running him down. Carl Mecklenburg, 77, runs down a very fast Chris Collinsworth, and the ball, though, is advanced down to the 34-yard line of Denver. Big enough to be a defensive end, and yet active enough to uh, cover as a linebacker. Very rare ability, uh, somewhat similar to A.J. Dewey, and he also has the same number. And they're using him the same way. Unfortunately, Dewey is out right now, but he did all right without him, upsetting Washington today, 35-17. We'll be going to NFL 84 for all the scores at halftime. Second and six, Brooks takes a look. Big leg play turned in by Dennis Smith. Who they say is going to be in the Pro Bowl for a lot of years. He has the whole package. I'm not sure how many people can understand how difficult it is coming forward to hit a guy like Brooks that solid. Boom, right there. That is a great tackle with excellent technique. 
and uh, that's one of the reasons that he's their starting strong safety. They feel very confident. Anybody coming their way, Smith is going to get them on the ground. Number one draft choice out of Southern California, 81. Third down and seven, Cincinnati. No score on the board. Anderson could be gunning it here. Looking at Collinsworth. Now he has a problem with the footing. Here's Anderson looking to run, and he's going to go. Chavis in pursuit, and he's picked off on an alert block by James Brooks. And Kenny Anderson looks like he might have gotten first down yardage. Anderson, a good running quarterback. In fact, in his career, he has over 2,100 yards. With that in better focus, he's averaged 5.3 yards every time he's run the ball over his 14 years. Difference between John Elway and Ken Anderson. Last year, I think it was uh, the case for John Elway that his second choice was to run the ball, that basic instinct with all that natural ability. Anderson's choice, the last resort, is to run the football. At 35 with surgical knees and a shoulder that was operated on, you don't want to take any you don't have to get. First and 10 Bengals, they're looking down close now. This is their deepest penetration. Wallace gain, second quarter. Here's a throw and a strike. It's Collinsworth coming back at the ball for a gain of maybe six yards. Now, the break in the action. Let's go to NFL 84 in New York. All right, Don, Ken Anderson is masterful to watch, but now in the Hoosier Dome, Curtis Dickey has scored the first touchdown for the Indianapolis Colts. He capped an impressive drive. It is 7 0 now. The Colts lead the New York Jets. Thank you, Bill McAtee. We're back at Denver, Colorado, and there's a timeout on the field. So, with a break in the action and still goose eggs on the board, we pause for this word. Sam White, an amateur musician, magi magician, is he? Maybe he is a musician. Rack on tour, and in the opinion of Bengal management, a very good football coach, taking over at 39. Brooks runs the ball on second down and five. James Brooks is down close to the 16-yard line. Today's game is brought to you by Chevrolet with the performance, the style, the innovation, the quality, and the value that make up today's Chevrolet. By Old Milwaukee, and Old Milwaukee Light, it doesn't get any better than this. And by Apple Computer. With Bob Trumpy, this is Don Crickey. Mile High Stadium, Denver, Colorado, 11.03 to play in the first half. Bengals driving, no score on the board. First and 10, Cincinnati. 17-yard line at Denver. Big guy, Kinnebrew runs, and he so far has not been quick enough to elude that very quick Denver defense. We got a change in the offensive line here. Gary Smith went out for a couple of plays. You see 74, Brian Blados now going out. Smith coming back in. Blados, one of the three number one picks that the uh, Cincinnati Bengals have this year. There's 74. Trying to learn how to play professional football. He's a break dancer at 308 pounds. Yep, in the rookie show, he was the hit of the rookie show. Break dancing, they said he wasn't dead probably still fixing the cracks in the floor. <laughs> I think he's down at about 295, but he lost a few. Here's the blitz. Anderson jumps off the ball. Let's see if they call that. That's a sack. Yeah, they're going to call as soon as he grabbed him. That was it. Woodard came in and grabbed him. Then as the linebacker had him firmly in his grasp, it's whistled dead. That's why no intentional grounding. The blitz again. You can see Woodard comes from inside. Nobody touches him. And this young man is tall, rangy, with great strength. Minus 13 yards on that play. And uh, that's basic, basically the way the Denver Broncos feel they're going to have to get to the quarterback. And that is go with the blitz. The intentional grounding when it's called is one of the most expensive plays in football for an offense because in addition to the big penalty added, you also lose it down. It was a 13-yard loss on the sack. And now it's third and about 23 for Cincinnati. Anderson stands in. He's got time now. He throws it out. ML Harris takes it, but there's very little gain. The ball's down, but now he dropped it. So Jim Breach comes out to pump one. He'll have some wind at his back, kicking north to south. Don, we played this game between the 20s. We've had uh, two turnovers by Denver, a fumble and an interception, but I don't think we've had a penalty. And that's rather unusual in the uh, first game of the season. There's always those butterflies, yeah, that right. real excitement. I don't recall one. They played it pretty cleanly to this point. Steve Trider will hold, and Jim Breach will try it from the 36-yard line, a 46-yard attempt. You'll recall his first from 50 into the win was nowhere close. 
This one will be very close. And through and good, and the first points are up. And a 46-yard field goal by Jim Breach. The Bengals strike first, and they go up three to nothing. We'll be back with the Cincinnati kickoff right after this. Here's Jim Breach after his successful field goal. Thanks, I needed that, and so did the Bengals. It's the first points of the game at field goal. Cincinnati had the ball for 14 plays on the drive. It took seven minutes. So Anderson, using a lot of plays, runs the clock, and finally, first points are up. There are the beat men. Zach Thomas is back. Also back for the Denver Broncos is Gene Lang, rookie from LSU. High spinner. Lang is going over to field it. He does at the 10-yard line. He's a flyer, and he gets out across the 20 to the 25. So Elway and the Bronco offense come back out, now trailing in the game, 3 nothing. Made low was on a tackle for the Bengals on special teams. Trump been making the transition from a pretty tough taskmaster and Forrest Gregg to a much easier going personality and Sam White. Was that a difficult adjustment for the Bengals? Don, surprisingly, it's been a very, very smooth adjustment. Obviously, Sam White and his offensive skills have helped make that uh, transition smooth and also Dick LeBeau remaining with the defense has helped a great deal, too. On first and 10, they go to the running play. Lang staying in the game, and he takes it out to the 28-yard line for a gain of perhaps three. Simpkins, 56 in the game, was on the stop. Big linebacker from Michigan. Game clock shows nine minutes and 10 seconds to play in the first half. Only points of the game, a 46-yard field goal moments ago by Jim Breach of Cincinnati. Don, uh, Rick Rosano started at middle linebacker. Uh, the Broncos have had some success running it. They now have Simpkins in at middle linebacker. I don't know if Rick Rosano was hurt or not, but we'll try to find out. Elway taking a look over the Bengal defense with a second down and six coming up. Green. Another screen. This one to Winder. He's got room to work, and Sammy Winder's been some player in this game. Shifting, starting, stopping. Duke stepping in, moving ahead for a 12-yard gain. So it's a first down for the Broncos on a well-executed screen play. Winder is not a guy that got a lot of press when he came in. Kind of uh, had a big year last year, and everyone was surprised at his ability. But gee whiz, he's shifty. He seems to know what he's doing. He's got that sense of where people are. Watch him set up those blocks. And he's tough. He can take a hit. Well, he took one there. But he's ready to go again. First and ten, Denver. Elway going to run it himself, and he can go. As you see, and he's across that field. John Elway gets 12 yards, and yet another first down. Let's watch John Elway come a sprinting right at us. Now, the thing about this call is that this is the $5 million man for the Denver Broncos. They've got no hesitation whatsoever to put him out there running. I mean, he's young. He's strong. But this is their quarterback, and they're going to do anything they possibly can to win, and him running it is one of the aspects. He is a player, and as you mentioned earlier, Trump, talking to people around the league, there isn't a team in the league that wouldn't make any deal they could to get him. Might not have had a great rookie year. And go through the growing pains that he'll grow through. Well, he seemed to have a lot of those behind him the way he's working against what was the number one defense in the NFL last year. First down, a pitch sack, but the play is whistled dead. Going right back to Winder, who's had a big first half running the ball. 7-14 to play in the half. The Bengals lead 3-0 on a Jim Breach field goal. Ball start. Like Lanier, the right tackle was in motion early. You caught him. First down. Well, they're speaking more about John Elway. There are just so many things that as a coach, you've got to sit back and say, I can't wait till we can do this, and I can't wait till we can do that, because there's physically nothing. I mean zero that John Elway cannot do. And uh, the future for this franchise and this kid, uh, it, I mean, you just can't imagine what's going to come in the next few years. And Reeves, the coach, has a history and a reputation of being a tremendous coach for the young players. As we see uh, Jesse Miles come in the game, run the ball across the 45-yard line. Dan Reeves took so many of the young players at Dallas under his wing. Staubach, when he was young, and Danny White. And he'll bring John Elway along the same way. You see the first down average somewhat misleading at this point. Bengals 3.4 and Broncos 6.8. That's first down yardage alone. 
Now it's going to be second down and 13 for Denver. Broncos on their home field trailing 3-0. They got one of the big guys, Jerry Boyarski, the big middle guard from Pittsburgh. Moving early. That's a man in there, Boyarski. You got it. He weighs about 285 pounds, and most of it's below his belt. Offsides, defense, and of course, Boyarski, the nose man, claims, as defensive people always do, that a shift in the voice, and that's what drew me off. But the coach will say, son, just watch the football. Don't listen to his voice. Encroachment, defense. Second down, number 61. So the Broncos beneficiaries of the call against Boyarski, they get five yards, and that brings up second down and eight. Butch Johnson goes wide to the right. Watson has not caught a ball yet. The ace of the Bronco receivers comes in motion at the lower portion of your screen. Elway has a problem. Gets it off, though. Hits Jesse Miles. He's down inside the 40-yard line. Looks like he has a first down, a 10-yard gain. Robert Jackson, the Bengals' free safety, knocked him down. This offense is just as the Bengals is very, very. I mean, you don't know where they're going to go next. They'll... Uh, They'll run just about anything, and obviously this is this is not what the Denver Broncos did last year. They had a very cut-down offense to accommodate John Elway. Uh, there was an article in Sports Illustrated about how he uh, still doesn't know the offense and didn't put forth the effort. I think that's a cheap shot. Elway, 6 of 11 for 62 yards, throwing the ball. To the line, to the race. Sammy Winder. Up and up, got some great trap blocking. Billy Bryan, the center, is knocking people out of the way. Heath Bishop, the left guard, shuttered the left tackle. They blew open the Bengal defense and straight ahead for a gain of 11 yards is Sammy Winder, who's now gained 70 yards in just eight carries. He's so quick, too, Don. Those first couple of three steps to the line of scrimmage, and he's got up a full head of steam, and then he's very, very difficult to handle. Out of southern Mississippi in his third year, Sammy Winder. So the Broncos drive on to the 26-yard line of Cincinnati. First and 10. Watson in motion. Elway gets some time. And here he goes. He's going to run himself. Looking for the 12th man. He finds the sideline and bails out. That's now the bank, quarterback. Right? You're right. You're right. Uh, that's one of the first things that a quarterback learns is exactly where that sideline is. Now the Bengals got a real problem. They come into this game figuring that John Elway is going to try to uh, throw it all over the place and beat him that way and they've got to deal with a running back who in the first uh, half here has already picked up 70 yards now you've got the defense wondering what's going to happen next and that's the idea of dan reeves offense and sam weiss's offense it used to be the offense didn't dictate to the defense what the defense had to do that's the wave of the future in the nfl well let's see what mr elway does now on second down and six will height and number one, who's not been too productive, he carries for maybe a yard. Might have gotten the ball down to the 20. Broncos, an excellent field goal range. You'll recall if you were with us in the outset, they had two substantial drives in the first quarter. Both times, though, they came to an end on turnovers. Once, fumble recovery. The second time, Glenn Cameron made a great interception. Okay, now the Bengals have six defensive backs up here. Two, four, six defensive backs. Four defensive linemen. And Reggie, and Reggie Williams. So it's a 4-1-6. Big play for the Broncos. Third down, four. Whoops. Misconnection at center. Going to be third down and nine. Let me try to explain myself a little better about uh, what I consider the wave of the future in the NFL. Ball start, number seven. Third down. Formation, Don, by motion, you can dictate to the defense that somebody's got to move somewhere. And if they keep moving and have success on offense, what you finally do as a defense is just say, to heck with it. We're going to play one formation and one defense, and the offense is dictated to the defense what they're going to do the rest of the day. Just keep showing them so much stuff that pretty soon they have to settle into one defense. Exactly. Now it's third down and nine for Denver as Elway steps up in the shotgun and the Bengals show a new look on defense. Here's a blitz. Reggie Williams can't get him. Plumrod goes for him. Elway throws to the end zone. Left, he stops and whips 
protesting about 30 yards down the field. Louis Breeden was the man in coverage, and he sprained his ankle. Elway almost fell down on the dirt, kept his balance. Whoa, what an equalizer that arm is, huh? 25 yards and a touchdown, and the Broncos take the lead. With Carlos, the former Cincinnati Bearcat, and hit the extra point. That could be a factor. As we have a 6-3 combination number on the board now, the Bengals trailing by three with 4.45 left to play. The Broncos ready to kick it off. From behind the offense, Elway sees Reggie Williams on the blitz. You can see his guts right here, too. He stands right there and uh, puts all of it right behind that ball. Butch Johnson, the veteran he is, runs with the quarterback as he scrambles. Six points. Now, Carlos, who missed the point after, will kick it off. John Simmons and David Verzer are back here. Is Verzer fielding the ball? He'll not bring that out. So Carlos gets a good load into the kickoff. And the Bengals have the ball first and 10 at their 20 when we come back. As there is a timeout on the board now at 4.38 left to play in the first half. The scoring drive. John Elway hit Butch Johnson on a third and 10. That's the way you like to convert third downs, son. Yeah, that's the way to do it. Right into the end zone for the payoff number. A touchdown on. It's a 6-3 to three score. Now Anderson and the Bengals with 4.38 to play in the first half going off in Brooks. Turns the corner somehow. He got away from trouble and gets a hit for yards. Mike Harden ran him out of bounds. It looked like there was going to be a five or six yard loss on the play. Brooks is a, has a smallish running back, but he's got good toughness and good shoulder strength. He can carry that ball. He's down nine carries for 32 yards, but... The Bengals haven't really established anything yet. They haven't really got anything up the middle. Uh, Denver is sitting wide on them. Let's see if they'll, the Bengals will try to come back with something up the middle here. Anderson, 7 for 14, throwing the ball for 73 yards. Second down and six coming up for Cincinnati. Takes the pitch back. Anderson throws on the run, and he's got his tight end. Coming out with the ball is M.L. Harris, and he's out to the 45-yard line. A 23-yard gain on the play, so the Bengals move it out. We speak of ability. Ken Anderson certainly displays some there. Rolling left, he fakes to the running back, and basically he's out there by himself. And then it's up to the tight end, M.L. Harris, to come from the other side of the offense. Watch the way he squares his shoulders up. Then he throws the ball down the field, a perfect spiral. Led properly, big pickup. Once again, just all kinds of different formations, all kinds of different motion, all kinds of different plays. And a first down on the play. Both teams using everything in their offensive repertoires. It is first down and 10 Cincinnati. Pitch back goes to James Brooks. Wait for the block. It isn't there, but he still gets to wave. Didn't get much, but he did well to get yards at all. He's out to the 47-yard line where Steve Foley and Steve Wilson of the Broncos knock him down. Denver, Colorado, a great place to see a pro football game. Year after year, they're either the leader or one of the leaders in attendance. Sold out 75,000 plus. And the Mile High Stadium can really get rocking when the Broncos get cooking. John, it's a great place to play, too. This is prescription athletic turf. There's no crowd on this field. It's well-drained. It's always fun to play here. The, the oxygen debt does come into, uh, in, into play a little bit. But it's just a nice stadium. And it's always full for 15 years in a row. Bronco fans have packed the place. Brooks on second down and eight gets across the 50-yard line and down to the 48. Game clock winding, 2.50 to play first half, 6-3, Broncos lead. Finally, something up the middle. They've been trying uh, outside for quite a while here now. They pop one up through the middle. Right now, we pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC television network. First for sports, WLWT TV 5, Cincinnati. The Bengals in white, set up, third down and a long two. Anderson with a quick drop. Here's the rush. He gets it downfield. It's intercepted. The ball is picked off by Steve Wilson. He's got blockers, and Wilson is back across midfield down to the 45-yard line. He came in and caught a pass ball. It was thrown hard. Isaac Curtis, the intended receiver, he slipped. Wilson was in the right place at the right time. 
You can watch Anderson. He's he's flush from behind, but he doesn't even see the guy. You'll see Curtis on the ground just to the left of it. Excellent interception. Very characteristic of the Bronco defense. Always looking for turnover. There's a Bronco standing tall at Mile High Stadium, Denver, Colorado. Don Crickey with Bob Trumpy as conference on the sideline. The offense going over some things with Coach Weich. Kenny Anderson was just intercepted. It was a great play by Harden of the Broncos. And now Denver leading 6-3. to three. Has the ball at the 45-yard line of Cincinnati. First and 10. Elway's had a great first half. Looking for some more. Let's go on. Watson's out there. And Watson catches the ball at the 5-yard line. Woo! You'd ask a couple of series ago, where is Watson? Well, you see the motion once again in its isolated coverage. Ray Horton on Watson. And watch the concentration on this football and where it's thrown. Elway gives That's Watson. Fantastic. Elway gives Watson a chance to catch it. And Watson certainly does. 40 yards on that catch. Just like they like it in Denver. Great second look. Our producer for NBC Sports is Ron Kershaw, our director, Mark Warner as the Broncos now go first and goal from the Cincinnati Five. Denver leading the game 6-3. to three. Late in the second quarter, here's Winder. He's been tough. And he bolts down to the one-yard line. As the two-minute warning will be given now. John Elway clapping his hands comes over to check things out with his coaches on the sideline. Timeout on the field. So the Broncos on a 40-yard strike from Elway to Watson in position to score a touchdown. Maybe they will when we come back. Want to see a real big league play? Let's watch John Elway again. Elway is lined up on the right hash. He throws to the goes to the left hash. He's almost directly behind Steve Watson. Watch the concentration. Then oh, getting the feet in. Takes timing to jump up properly. Of course. Not a, lot, not a lot of under, people understand that to run down there and keep concentration on the football, your head's got to be steady. And he throws it right over his shoulder, and he keeps his eyes on that football. 40-yard game. Now it is second down and goal from a yard away. Broncos leading 6-3. to three. There's a great look. There's going to be a collision momentarily. Do the run into the end zone. Winder, touchdown, Broncos. Gene Lang got the touchdown, 33. Winder blocked and Gene Lang went in behind him. Once again, the motion on this Dan Reeves Denver Bronco line. Watch number 88. Kay comes in there, just roots out that nose tackle. Six points. Coach Reeves is very high on Clarence Kay. He's a rookie tight end from Georgia, 88. Really shown brightly in the preseason games and in camp. Now with 1.53 to play in the first half, the Broncos have opened up a 12-3 lead. You'll remember they missed their first extra point. There's the man who couldn't connect, Rich Carlos. Ready to try here. They could go in with a 10-point halftime lead. But with Anderson and the Bengal offense ready to go with almost two minutes on the clock. It's not over yet for the Bengals in the first half. That time, Carlos drills it right through the middle. It's a 13-3 game. The Broncos in the lead. Bengals and Kenny Anderson get another crack at it when we come back. The 40-yard pass from Elway to Watson set up the one-yard plunge by Gene Lang. Broncos take a 13-3 lead with 157 to play in the first half. Rich Carlos, number three, ready to kick it off again for Denver. Elway having his greatest half of pro football in the regular season. He had a great game we saw last year, Bob, at uh, the L.A. Coliseum against the Raiders. This showtime. Not a bad average for Watson either. One catch, 40 yards. Keep you on the roster. Yes, sir. Carlos hits it long. Stanford Jennings, a rookie, lets it go out of the end zone in his wisdom. There's no future in taking it at him. 
So Anderson and the offense will now go first and 10 from the Cincinnati 20. 157 on the clock. We'll be back after this. Don Pricky with Bob Truffy, Mile High Stadium, Denver, Colorado. Cincinnati Bengals trailing 13 to 3. With just under two minutes to play in the first half, going offense first and 10. Anderson gets time and swings it out. James Cook drops the ball. He was very nearly picked up by Mr. Wright, Louis Wright. Looked up field. Denver going with the four-man front, two linebackers, and five defensive backs. Obviously, the prevent defense. They'll give up a 12 or 15-yard reception. The Bengals do have three timeouts left. As you can see this coverage from behind the strong safety, Smith wants to make sure nobody gets deeper than he does. They're just covering zone on top, man-to-man -to -man underneath. And it almost is a turnover. Second and 10, Cincinnati. Anderson again has to go out in the flat to James Brooks. Very little yardage. He does get out of bounds with 146 to play. Dan Reeves, the Bronco coach, says we want people to know if they're not aware we're in a tough division. Last year, the AFC West sent three teams to the playoffs. Two, the Raiders in Seattle played for the AFC Conference Championship. Of course, the Raiders went on to win the whole ball game. Yeah, that, that, that's a pretty tough schedule when you play those guys twice a year, right? Real tough one. By the way, the Denver Broncos have a six-game winning streak here, regular season winning streak here in Mile High Stadium. Over the years, they've been Andres in this building. They're awful tough to stop here. Right now, Anderson takes a look. Down the middle, he makes the connection. Rodney Holman, a big tight end from Tulane. Gets out to midfield, a 27-yard gain, and 138 to play as the Bengals wisely call a timeout. Linebacker coverage on the tight end. Tom Jackson, 57, was trying to uh, keep pace with Rodney Holman. Young man out of Tulane who last year had a fish hook in his eye and couldn't play the entire season. You'll watch Rodney Holman come into your picture from the left-hand side of the screen. Jackson in coverage. He gets inside. Excellent catch. A wave sweeps Mile High Stadium. By section, they get up, chatting defense. Broncos dig in. Bengals have the ball. First and 10 at midfield. 138 to play in the first half. Look at this formation. Anderson goes in the flat, gets James Brooks looking for the sideline. He gets it six yards and out of bounds. 133 to play in the half. Nobody does it better in bringing the team down the field with not much time than Anderson. The Raiders in Houston locking up at the Astrodome. Houston, a much improved team. Indianapolis, Cush is always tough opening day. He says he doesn't have a good football team, but they'll be tough to beat today, leading the Jets in the first quarter. here. Nope. Swing pass goes out to Alexander. He puts his head down and Charles Alexander does not get out of bounds on the clock run. Big mistake. Big mistake. Big mistake. The sideline is your ally in the last two minutes. He gained an extra two yards but it's going to cost him another 15 seconds. Exactly what it cost him as the clock winds out. They go into formation now with 110 to play in the half. Anderson on first down. Home run ball, his man took it, it's almost intercepted by Steve Foley. He's been a good player for eight years here in Denver. Steve Foley, a former two-lane quarterback. They're looking at Verzer, who's due to deliver. Double rotation zone by Denver. Good chuck on both outside receivers at the line of scrimmage to try to uh, uh, alter their pattern. Anderson basically had nobody to throw it to. Anderson, 12 of 22, throwing the ball for 138 yards, one interception, which subsequently was turned into a Denver touchdown when Elway pitched 40 yards to Watson, then Gene Lang went over the top from the yard out. Second and 10, they go to the draw play. Running high with the ball to Stanford Jennings, the rookie from Furman, gets a first down inside the 25-yard line. And the Bengals, single four, and are allotted a timeout. No, they don't. They let it run. They'll call an automatic play here. It's been practiced for weeks. Every team has it. It's a standard play. Call it the line of scrimmage. That was a 14-yard gain by Stanford Jennings. Swing pass, and Anderson stops the clock. Jennings bumped off the play by Woodard, but no foul. 
38 seconds left. It'll be second and 10 Cincinnati. Well, that makes it even. Jennings was behind the line of scrimmage and hit before the ball. And uh, Winder got uh, shillelagh in the first quarter by Reggie Williams. A lot of combination defenses. I always write to Trump what Bud Grant said about defense. He said, the only good thing about a man-to-man -man in this modern-day football is when there's, uh, something goes wrong, you know who to blame. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty easy to pick out. Anderson, 38 seconds on the clock, second and 10 inside the 25. Good protection, a good throw. Collinsworth inside the 15, inside the 10. He's down to the 8-yard line, and these Bengals are tough. Coming back the other way. A 16-yard gain on the play. They started at the 20. And what did they have when they when they uh, had the ball there, when they finally got the ball? Was it like 138? I think they had 138. And you can see Collinsworth is at the top of the screen. Second receiver inside comes all the way across underneath the coverage. And this young man can catch the football, although he's only the property, he's the property of the Cincinnati Bengals only this year. Then he goes to the U.S. Football League. Well, he has been a player. Chris Collinsworth, he was a second-round draft choice in his fourth year. His previous three years, he's been to the Pro Bowl. About 1,100-plus yards worth of passes last season. Even though he missed two games. He's been busy today, too. He's gotten an awful lot of action. Four for 46. Well, we know when they go back into formation that Anderson's going to throw a multiple flex look at them. Try to free somebody. Bengals down close. And they can make this a much closer ball game at halftime. Next Sunday, some great games. The Broncos move against the Bears in Chicago. The Bears opening with an impressive win. Quarterback by Jim McMahon over Tampa Bay today. New England plays at Miami. Both those AFC Eastern rivals were winners today. Buffalo goes to St. Louis. Kansas City takes on the Bengals at Riverfront in Cincinnati. San Diego at Seattle. Cleveland against the LA Rams. And the Colts play at Houston. Don Long huddle here by the Cincinnati Bengals. Obviously, more than one play called. He gets time to run about four or five plays here. They do it. Keep their heads about them. First down. Anderson rolling out. Throws into the end zone. Here's the penalty marker. It's going to go against Denver. And it's going to be first and goal for Cincinnati. They got Steve Wilson on a push. This has been some impressive drive with very little time to do it. Isn't that something, too? Now, all the Denver fans are going to talk about tomorrow. Why in the world do they use that prevent defense? And the Bengals go right down the field 80 yards. And if they hang Illegal it, contact, number 45, first down. If they come up with the six points, the fans are going to say, why is that? Well, what the defense is hoping is that it takes more time than it has to get the ball down the field. The design of the defense is just simply to make sure no one gets deeper than you. And the big play, the pass to Rodney Holman. That one shouldn't happen. Those who argue against the prevent defense, they prevent you from winning the way teams move the ball against them. Right now, Anderson faking, looking, throwing. Isaac Curtis is not delay. Steve Wilson covering. 21 seconds left, though, for the Bengals. Now, interesting, on that last play, they didn't call interference. They called illegal use of the hands. In other words, it's an illegal chuck. And therefore, they didn't get the ball at the one-yard line. I think this ball is tipped. Bengals yeah. using their time wisely. Still have one timeout remaining. What are you going to call here, Coach? Probably slip that tight end up the middle again, roll out and go to him. I'd look to Collinsworth. I don't know what the pattern would be. Collins worked on Steve Wilson. M.L. Harris lined up at the left side, the tight end. James Cook. Tip ball. Incomplete. All-out blitz by the Denver Broncos. Joe Collier. He jumped up and grabbed you. Watch him. Coming from everywhere. Look at Harris over the middle, wide open. Tip by Tom Jackson. And I don't think Brooks would have caught it anyway. He was covered very well out there in the flat. And it would have been a chance for an interception. Denver's tough. They, they are, are 
so. And they're together, very in concert, this defense. Jackson almost had the ball. Now, the ball just inside the five-yard line of Denver. Third down and goal, Cincinnati. Broncos lead the Bengals 13 to 3. 17 seconds to play in the half. Timing pattern to Collinsworth. He screened out the ball by Wilson on a clean play, and the Bengals will have to go to the field goal. Actually, the prevent defense works. You see Collinsworth at the top. Good coverage by Wilson. He keeps himself between the ball and the receiver. Overthrown once again. And the Denver Broncos would be glad to give up three points in this situation. The defense did its job. Jim Brees in to go for his third field goal try. He's one for two so far. Hit a 46-yarder. Working with some wind at his back. Pretty much point blank range. He didn't do it. Throw a sure shot. So the excellent drive of the Bengals comes up empty. Snap was high. And it, that snap that you read, field goals attempted and made from 10 to 19 yards, a negative stat, a missed opportunity. Strider, the uh, holder, normally has very good hands tend to think that that ball was put down just a little bit crooked. And of course, that will affect the flight of the football. Missed opportunity. Well, you can blame the holder, but I don't think Breach covered himself with glory either. That was even with not too good a hold. He got the ball up. However, we have a long way to go in this little encounter. First and ten. to the locker room a 13 to 3 lead for the Broncos and a salute standing salute from Solat Mile High Stadium Broncos get the ball to begin the second half too Don so this momentum will probably carry well you have to be impressed with the quarterbacking Elway can throw it he can get himself out of trouble with that gun he has attached to his right shoulder Obviously, the receivers have confidence in his ability, and the defense has been the secret today for the Broncos. Bob Costas in NFL 84 coming up in New York. An exciting opener in Denver at Mile High Stadium. Don Crickey with Bob Truffy, where the Broncos lead the Bengals 13-3 at halftime. Assessment of John Elway has to be good. Uh, he's had two big plays, a 25-yard uh, pass to uh, Johnson, and at 40 yards to Watson, he has such great ability. But the secret of this first half for the Denver Broncos, Don, has been the Broncos' defense. They have shut down a very potent Cincinnati Bengals offense, and you win in this league with defense. Forget what John Elway does. Well, we got a long way to go, and Anderson certainly was impressive in that last drive that resulted in no points, but we'll see more of them. And NFL 84 halftime activities will continue in a moment after these messages from your local station. As Elway has shown for Denver, now back to New York. All right, Don, thank you very much. We'll use this opportunity to update the scoreboard beginning with the finals. Miami's Dan Marino threw five touchdown passes at RFK Stadium. A surprisingly easy time for the Dolphins, 35-17 over the Redskins. San Diego defeated Minnesota and did it easily in Minneapolis. 42 to 13, a Ray Worsing field goal of 22 yards with four seconds left. Earlier, he had kicked a 54-yarder. San Francisco beats Detroit 30 to 27. Four touchdown passes for the Giants' Phil Simms in his first regular season start since 1981. The Giants beat Philadelphia 28 to 27. New England led 21-3 at the half in Buffalo. They hold on to win 21-17 over the Bills. Atlanta's Gerald Riggs filled the vacancy left by the injury to William Andrews very nicely indeed. 202 yards and two TDs, 36-28 the Falcons over the Saints. Kansas City comes into Pittsburgh, and at Three Rivers, they beat the Steelers 37-27. Chicago 34 and Tampa Bay 14, 61 yards for Walter Payton. He needs 627 now to pass Jimmy Brown on the all-time list for number one on that list. St. Louis rallied late, but Green Bay held on to beat them the final score at Green Bay. 24 to 23. Game is in progress. Houston surprisingly in front of the Raiders 7-0 late in the second. The Jets and Indianapolis tied at 7 at halftime. And in the game you're watching, it's 13-3 Denver over Cincinnati at the half.
Stay with us now as NFL 84 halftime activities continue following these messages and a word from your local station. The Broncos are back on the field, and here come the Bengals as they'll be kicking off to Denver. And we'll be ready in a moment. With Bob Trumpy, this is Don Cricky back at Denver, Colorado, where the Bengals in white ready to kick it off. There is Jim Breach hits the ball. Downfield, going into the end zone for it, is Zach Thomas. And out on a touchback, first and 10 for the Broncos at their 20. The halftime numbers, the scoreboard is the key one, 13-3 Denver, but there's the breakdown on how they got there. Look at that time of possession for the Bengals. Almost twice as much. For the Broncos, it's been uh, just two simple words, or three simple words, big play and defense. Big play by John Elway, defense by the Broncos, and they lead 13-3. Watson, who has just one pass reception, but it was good for 40 hours to set up a touchdown wide to the right for Denver. When Samson's out wide left, the H-back, Sawyer goes in motion. They go to Winder, the runner, and he doesn't get much. Ball is out to about the 23-yard line. Winder had a big first half, very impressive running the ball. Rick Rosano, one of the inside linebackers, making the stop for Cincinnati. Winder in that first half on nine carries had 75 yards for a very good 8.3 yard average. Particularly against this defense. Interesting to see if they throw as much as they did. Both quarterbacks put it up on first down. You see Elway with numbers in the first half. He was intercepted once, but it was a truly great play to take the ball away by Gwen Cameron of the Bengals. Elway with a problem. They pick off those tacklers, and here's Ross Browner trying to run him down, and he does. Uh-oh. That was can hurt. Uh -oh. Elway goes right down hard on his shoulder. I guarantee you there's a lot of people in this stadium holding their breath right now. Right in this booth. That's the Price a quarterback risks when he runs. A 265-pound defensive end, Browner, who can run, coming right down on him. He's not timid, though. You see the blitz, 50 Cameron, a linebacker. Now Ross Browner. And obviously, defensive linemen like shots at quarterbacks. Let's hope that Elway is not injured. Well, we certainly have to hope that. We're going to take a break in the action. While John Elway is attended to on the sideline, we'll be back at Mile High Stadium in a moment. Here is John Elway a moment ago coming off the field. Apparently all right. That's the good news. He seemed to have banged up his left shoulder. He's coming out, if but temporarily, and Gary Kubiak, his backup, also a second-year man from Texas A&M, is into quarterback the Broncos. The ball's at their 19-yard line. What's well, going to be third down and 11. Well, Kubiak comes in when he's got to throw as he steps up in the shotgun. Didn't have time to warm up. Sammy Winder who knows what to do with it. But so does the Bengal defense, which now starts to cut down on Winder's running. Good call by Dan Reeves. Going with that shot, shotgun, figuring the Bengals are going to look for the, for the pass, but the student body right, and Winder with great speed. That's a good tackle, too, by Jackson. He gets up underneath his legs. Ross Browner on the assist. Well, that's not enough for the first down. This will be only the second punt of the game for the rookie for the Broncos. Chris Norman from South Carolina's John Elway rest that shoulder. He had to hurt his shoulder. Fortunately, it's his left one. And it didn't seem to be too badly hurt. They haven't looked at it much since he's been off the field. Good snap. Big rush. And a high kick. Norman arcs one downfield. A fair catch. Signal for him made. John Simmons at the 40-yard line of the Bengals in Cincinnati. Starts out with good field position, failing in the game 13-3, but virtually the entire second half yet to be played. 13-10 to go in the third quarter. We'll be back in Denver, Colorado, right after this. John Elway being attended to, banged his left shoulder when running with the ball, tackled by Ross Browner. Right now, the Bengals have the ball at their 40-yard line. Their first possession of the third quarter. They trail in the game 13 to 3. Anderson, you'll remember, moved them right down the field in that two-minute drill, but the Bengals came up empty at the end of the second half of second quarter. Kinnebrew has been unable to move the ball against the Bronco defense. He runs it here for maybe a yard.
That Bronco defense, the defensive line, gets an awful lot of credit today. They are standing in there tough. They, these linebackers are not big people. They weigh no more than 225 pounds. And the three guys up front are taking care of the big guys and the linebackers are there to make the tackle. That's exactly the way Joe Collier designs the defense. Been working for a lot of years. 12.31 to play. Third quarter. Anderson takes a look over to his right to Isaac Curtis. 12 years in the league and yet still a deep threat. Here's Brooks almost lost the handle. Gets both arms and the ball. Puts his head down and gets close to a first down. Second and six. He got about five. So it'll be third and short yardage. Today's game is brought to you by Isuzu, makers of fine cars and trucks. By IBM and PC Jr., there's a lot that's new about PC Jr., and it's all good news for you. And by AC Delco, the smart part. That's his career completions today. He's under 50%. The Broncos. Get all the credit for that. Third one, and Kennebrew comes up short. He just isn't quick enough to run with this Denver defense. Well, but the defensive line beat the Bengals' offensive line to the punch. They're across the line of scrimmage, and Kennebrew's got no place to go whatsoever. He hasn't all day. You see Boyer in there. Harden, they're aggressive at the line of scrimmage. They're taking it away from that mammoth offensive line of the Bengals. 252 pounds is not a lot of weight when you're running into three linebackers. You're real light in that case, and you're heading back. So now we have McAnally in for his third punt of the game. Zach Thomas is back deep for the Denver Broncos. McAnally kick. He's good. Oh, he throws the ball, and very well he gets the ball out. It's going to be a first down and a lot more as Stanford Kennings is all the way down inside the 20-yard line. So Coach White and the Bengals are slapping hands on the far sideline and with good reason, a 34-yard gain on a fake punt. No hesitation whatsoever. It's a low snap. He looks like he's going to kick it. And there's a defensive man within two yards of Jennings. Steve Wilson doesn't even notice it. Simmons gets a good block. Jennings with a long pickup. That's that offense again that'll try anything. Watch this. Jennings was the quarterback there, wide open. Excellent play. Boy, the rookie coach from Cincinnati's got some guts, doesn't he? He does. He gambles and he wins here, and now it's first and ten. James Brooks doesn't win now as he runs right into Ken Woodard. And the Orange Trust defense, which has bumped so many ovations in this packed stadium, does again. Those formations, that defensive alignment, so many different situations that the Bengals offensive line has to look at has for the most part today been confusing and they're just missing a guy Let's see how he uh, holds it up there he looks like he's favoring it a little bit question is leading 13 to 3 do you take a chance on your uh, franchise player a bruised left shoulder pulling on the right but he obviously is in pain warming up second and 12 Anderson stands in throws and gets his man Chris Collinsworth Working hard to get inside the 10-yard line. Collinsworth is going to be very close to a first down. Music and inside linebacker and Dennis Smith tackled him. Collinsworth once again inside the formation in the slot. Doesn't really run a pattern, just looks for a spot after the linebacker leaves. Hit by Anderson. The Bengals have had several opportunities to this point in the game. They've gotten this close. All they've been able to come up with is three points. Missed opportunities. He's on target, average for his career, 4.8 yards per game for the Bengals. Got five today, although not for the yardage. Bengals gambled and got 34 yards on a fake punt, a pass by McAnally to Stanford Jennings. Now they look for the first down. Charles Alexander gets inside the 10 and close to one, and a yellow flag comes in. Base pass Denver. Personal foul on the defense and automatic first down. Let's give credit to the defensive line of the Denver Broncos. They are at the line of scrimmage. They are there. There you see the face mask, 45 face Wilson. Mask, number 45, first down. But they have been extremely aggressive today. Bengals at a 10-point deficit.
Bronco defense digging in now as the ball is placed inside the Denver five-yard line. First goal. James Brooks in the lineup. Rodney Holman is in. Two tight ends. Harris is left. Three tight ends in. They're going to power the ball. Our shoulder's setting up. We go to Brooks. He cuts back, and he doesn't get there. Look at this. Standing defense by the Broncos. Steve Busick, number 58, was there to make the play. Reuben Carter with him. Munoz down there in front of you. He's got a cramp in his leg and the hamstring. Well, if you're going to throw it, this is the time to throw it. Don't wait till third down. Don't throw it once. Throw it twice. It's now John Elway Trump is leaving the field with oh, the trainer. That's bad news. Left shoulder was injured. Not his throwing arm, but he was injured. Handoff running hard is Kennedy. All these stadiums have x-ray facilities underneath. I'm sure they'll take John Elway in there and at least x-ray the shoulder to make sure that there's nothing wrong, uh, out of place or broken. They want to take no chances with John Elway. This deja vu, the closing moments of the second quarter. You'll remember the Bengals got down close and couldn't get it in. Look at Dana Smith in there. Across that line yeah. of scrimmage. Beat the Bengals to the point. Third and goal from the two-yard line for Cincinnati. James Brooks, blockers in front. Can he outrun the defense? He does. It's a touchdown for the Bengals. And they're back in the ball game, trailing 13-9. Son, he did an excellent job. Ken Woodard almost tripped him up. He was able to give a little high step there and avoid that tackle and then run it to the corner of the end zone. Watch number 52, just when he gets to the skin part. There he is, right there. That was very close to being a, a stopper. Brooks with the speed. Great balance, too. Alexander with good speed was out in front of him, took one player out. Denver Bronco defense almost held him off again, but now we have... Jim Breach looking to make it a three-point game. And it is. The uh, Broncos lead cut to three. They now lead it 13 to 10 with 7.09 to play in the third quarter. We'll be back to sold out Mile High Stadium right after this. With Elway taken out to check out a left shoulder injury, Kubiak will have to be the man now for the Denver Broncos. Last year, Donnie, he only threw 22 passes in the NFL, completed 12. Scotty quarterback, though, got good talent, although his arm doesn't even come close to John Elway's. I'm not sure anybody else does either, but... But he's got some pretty good ability. He led the Broncos to a win over Seattle. Here is a knuckleball kick down the field. Gene Lang takes it for Denver. Running hard, and the pursuit comes hard. Knockdown made. Coming down on special teams for the Cincinnati Bengals. Ralph Battle, number 31. And Barker was also in, a rookie linebacker. So now, with a new quarterback in, forced by, in there by injury to Elway, the Broncos will see what they can do when we come back. Look at that possession time. Only 10 points to show for uh, 25 minutes worth of possession. Better than twice the amount for the Denver Broncos. The Bengals have not made good on their opportunity. First and ten for Kubiak in Denver. The backup quarterback in for John Elway, who was banged up a short time ago, injured his left shoulder, not his throwing shoulder. He's gone to the locker room to be x-rayed. John Elway has been the big factor for the Broncos in this game, along with great defense, and now we'll see if Kubiak can keep the momentum. John, it's amazing how psychologically Elway leaving the field is a lift to Cincinnati. The whole place is down and with reason. And uh, Denver is very quiet. Elway playing a tremendous game up to the point where Ross Browner tackled him and fell on it. It's back to Winder. Looks for holes and there's a hard stick put on him. Coming up with Guy Frazier, an outside linebacker who played nearby in Laramie, Wyoming college ball now, this is not a good idea I don't want to coach the Denver Broncos but if you keep giving the ball to winder I mean one you're going to destroy the confidence of Gary Kubiak and two you're going to keep giving uh, a big 
help to the de to the Cincinnati Bengals defense. Let him throw it. I they want to take a few snaps just to get in the game. Yeah, but you can't do that at this level, leading by three points in the third quarter, don't you? You got to take a chance with the guy. Well, they're going to take one right now because here's Kubiak's first pass, and it's a good one. Henley Marker also comes in from the secondary. To the area of Butch Johnson and Louis Breed down. This is going to be an interference call against the defense. And Johnson was knocked down flat. Holding against the defense, an automatic first down for the Broncos. He threw that ball very well. Let's we'll see Kubiak looking to his left. See if we can see the holding. There he is, right holding there in front of you. Number 34, first down. That's an excellent catch. Bengals playing some games tough with that pass rush. Stunning as Browner looped in behind and came up the middle, but Brian picked him up and bumped him off the play. Trying to get pressure in front of Kubiak. Yep, now taking a 10-7 lead in the third quarter over the Indianapolis Colts. Here in Denver, the Broncos holding to a 13-10 lead over Cincinnati. Broncos led by 10 at the half, 13 to 3. He joined us late. John Elway went out after playing a great game for two and a half quarters. Tackle, his left shoulder was injured. We don't know how badly, but he's going to the locker room. Hand off, winder, dipping and looping, and finally he runs into Reggie Williams, who puts him right down in the dirt on the infield portion. He's nifty. He can get to behind some of those big offensive linemen and slide through there, and it's tough for the defense to catch up to him. He's an excellent running back. He's going to help this team. He can also catch the ball very well. Fifth round draft charge, Sammy Winder has emerged as their best runner over the past two seasons. The lone setback now is Winder as the wideouts go way out to either flank. And Kubiak takes a look over the middle. Now throws out. Gets a connection. And Sawyer, the eighth back, pulls ahead. Looks like he is the Bronco first down. Very conservative approach now by Denver. So far, Dan Reeves has had Kubiak throwing the ball to the outside almost exclusively. And he's got a good choice here. This is kind of a pick play. Jackson is the safety inside. Ray Horton had the outside man in coverage and kind of scraped off the defensive back there for. So you're wide open. So Sawyer. Delivers, gets a first down for the Broncos, and now Kubiak, throwing well, two for two, sets his team first and ten. Penalty marker, right at the snap of the ball. I think Denver was offside there. They had a little movement on the line of scrimmage, and that's a problem, too, when you have a new quarterback coming in. Different no. snap count. Bengals looking to avert that bad start Trump they had a year ago, as you remember vividly, when they lost six of their first seven games then came on to win six of their last nine including three or four against playoff teams but it was too late at that point to get in but they were a good team by the end and the defense was number Outside. one number 83 Sawyer Outside. left early the H back last year they couldn't have had more distractions than they had this year things have gone very smoothly uh, even with a new coach and some new coaches and uh, they've had some defections to the U.S. Football League and some some holes to fill in this offense and they've got one player in drug rehab but generally it, it's gone pretty smooth 13 to 10 ball game Denver in their home orange white and blue leading the game by three with backup quarterback Gary Kubiak in for injured John Elway who injured his left shoulder not his throwing shoulder we don't know how seriously Kubiak rolling out Samson wide open throw to Watson and it's incomplete Rosano right there to make a good defensive play. Don Denver had Cincinnati totally confused with that formation and that motion. 84, Clint Sampson was alone down here on the sideline. No one covering him. I'm sure Dan Reeves uh, noticed that. And I have a feeling we're going to see that play again and see it again quickly. Kubiak can move. Well, when you're playing behind John Elway, you pretty much have to play the way he plays if you're going to make this team. So if Elway can roll out pretty well, I tend to think that Kubiak can roll out pretty well. Kubiak, an eighth-round draft choice last year out of Texas A&M. Spins it out in the flat. Good throw. He's got Winder. And on 
second and 15. The ball's advanced close to the Bronco 42-yard line. Lewis Breeden and Guy Frazier were on the stop for Cincinnati. He shows good presence out there. But he's not excited at all. He's thrown the ball very well. He knows where the uh, outlet receivers are. Uh, some people last year thought that Kubiak picked up the offense better than John Elway did. Out of Texas A&M. Elway's coming back on the field, although holding his arm and shoulder rather gingerly. John Elway has ice in his left shoulder. That's right. He does not have his shoulder pads on. Well, that's not good news. But he's out here to buoy his team as best he can as Kubiak can't deliver on the third down play. And so the Broncos will have to punt the ball back to Cincinnati. John Simmons dropping back for Denver, or for Cincinnati, with 4.31 left to play in the third quarter. Only the third punt of the game, Bronco. There's Elway. That big ice bag on the uh, left shoulder, no pad. Obviously, every player on that sideline wants to know exactly not whether he's hurt enough to play again today, but will he be available next week? Shoulders hanging kind of low. Yes, it is. Punch by Chris Norman, the rookie punter, and John Simmons of the Bengals gets ready and signals a fair catch. He's fair. He signals off the late. Yeah, but I don't think it's going to be a signal for the fair catch. He's got to be given room to catch the ball. I think they're going to penalize the, the Bronco player for interfering with the catch, regardless of signal. responsible for running into him with a That's a good point though, Trump. Even if he does not fair catch, they have to give him room to catch the ball. Absolutely. I, I think it has nothing to do with the fair catch signal. We'll see though. Roger Jackson came down and really popped him. So the, they're booing now, but I think when they hear the explanation, if I am correct, it has nothing to do with the uh, fair catch signal. Here's the second line at the referee and Dan Reeves. Jackson goes to the bench and the uh, Bengals go on offense when we come back to Mile High Stadium. Well, the plot thickens here in Denver. A penalty call on punt coverage against the Broncos gives the Bengals better field position now as the Cincinnati team trails by three points. Dan Reeves, the Denver coach, irate. You got a good one going at Mile High Stadium, but we want to show you what just happened in Indianapolis. Pat Ryan gets it off to Mickey Schuler, TD pass of nine yards. Second Ryan to Schuler, TD combination, 16 to seven, as Pat Leahy missed the extra point. Thank you, Bill. We're ready to go here again now in Denver as the Bengals break the huddle. Isaac Curtis goes wide right. Tough for Anderson to call signals. The Bronco boosters are riled up. Here's a blitz by Smith. Curtis turned and the ball was almost in the arms of the defender Steve Wilson. Strong safety blitz, man-to-man -man coverage on the outside. Anderson had to throw the ball. Curtis didn't even look. Somebody didn't notice the blitz. And the play, this has not been a good day for Ken Anderson for whatever reason. He's had a lot of pressure in his face. There's Smith, 49. Curtis never sees the ball. No chance to catch it whatsoever. Someone is supposed to notice that blitz. That ball is a foot higher by Still, 3.55 to play in the third quarter. 
a 13 to 10 game Denver. Broncos led 13 to three at the half behind great defense and the passing of John Elway. Then John Elway went out in the third quarter. He scrambled, Ross Downer caught him, fell on Elway who has an injured left shoulder. Now he's throwing shoulder with his ice out. And it's quite apparent he won't play again today. McAnally hits a line drive, a tremendous punt, driving Zach Thomas back to the 10. Here's the pursuit. Excellent pursuit by the Cincinnati Bengals. Leo Barker, that rookie linebacker, was down again. And so, Kubiak and the Bronco offense comes out. With Bob Trumpy, this is Don Crickey back at Mile High Stadium, Denver, Colorado, where the Broncos have the ball in a three-point lead with 3.24 to play in the third quarter. Defensively for Cincinnati, Brown and Edwards, the defensive ends. Rye is the nose tackle. Frazier, Rosano, Cameron, and Williams back the line. Hand off. Running hard, but not very far, is Sammy Winder. Whatever he was doing right in the first half, the Bengals would style that. Well, he had an awful lot of success in the first half when they, when the Denver Broncos had a great deal of motion. And it was taking away some of the support. Now they seem to have gone away from a lot of the motion. He still picked up 89 yards, though, for the Broncos today. He had 75 yards on nine first half carries, now has 89 yards on 15 carries. Houston leading the Raiders in the third quarter at the Astrodome. New quarterback, new coach, lots of good linemen for the Oilers. 11 new quarterbacks starting over the ones who were at the team's last season the closing game in the NFL. Tight in. He's got a strike to Dean Lang, who was kicked and hard by Cameron. On the play, so it's Frazier. Jim Wright was wide open down here on the corner pattern. Side in, number 87. Kubiak didn't notice him. He was looking for the outlet receiver underneath the coverage. You can see Lane kind of sneak out there. Kubiak's taking no chances. He knows that uh, his responsibility here is to keep the offense alive, but make sure there are no turnovers. Down now for the Broncos, third down and four. All at the 26-yard line of Denver. Here's a blitz. They pick it up. Long looping pass for Sampson. Rising up the ball. Close, but the game of inches. Long out. 152 to go, third quarter. You know, I'm really surprised. I think Steve Watson has caught just that one pass, and that was the one from John Elway, the 40-yarder down on the sideline, and they've pretty much gone away from him for the rest of the day. Fourth part of the game coming up now for the Broncos. Once again, high percentage pass. Reed was right there. Yeah. If you're not going to have that ball intercepted, uh, Kubiak knows that. He's smart enough to realize that that's his responsibility. John Simmons back deep, and there is the putter, a rookie from South Carolina, Chris Norman. I was getting Simmons this time. Jackson is right there. 48 yard punt. You do see no return. And so it's 144 to play in the third quarter. The Cincinnati Bengals trailing 13 to 10 go back on offense. Broncos Trump continuing to show the veteran Kenny Anderson a lot of defensive looks, including blitzes that where's one? There we can take a look at a lot of final scores right now. Moreno throws for five touchdowns as the Dolphins upset the skins at RFK in Washington. San Diego blows away the Vikings in the debut of Les Steckel, the new coach of Minnesota. Florida follow right now, live action at Nile High. Anderson checking off, and the receivers have their hands to their helmets trying to hear what he's saying. Nathanael, good coverage by the Broncos. And a penalty mark is also down. Oh, first sack of the day, excuse me, second sack of the day by the Denver Broncos. And once again, that defense of the Denver Broncos constantly confusing the Bengals' offense, and this is a veteran group. The Bengals will get a first down. Rulon Jones beating Anthony Munoz, the all-pro offensive tackle of the Cincinnati Bengals. It is 
it's ruled a mild violation. That can be anywhere from a five to a 15 yard penalty face mask. And he had a good one going at mile high down quickly with Bob Trumpy with 140 to play in the third quarter. Right now, the Bengals have the ball, first down and 10 at their 26 yard line. You know, they've turned conservative here. I can't tell you why, but the Bengals don't appear to be using the motion and the formations that they did earlier in the game. Anderson on first down. Oh, skips one in, a one hopper. Stanford Jennings, the rookie from Furman, trying to make a play on the ball. It'll Anderson, be second and ten. Excuse me, Don. Anderson has not had a good day. He has been rushed. There is no question about that. But he has also had times when uh, he has not been rushed and not thrown the ball particularly well. This is not a typical Ken Anderson day. Field goal in the closing seconds by Wershing carry the 49ers over the Lions. The Giants with Sims throwing for four touchdowns at the Eagles. In. Got a man open. David Berzer catches the ball for a big, big Cincinnati game. Anderson standing in and standing in as the rush came. Then he unloaded. He was hit a 28-yard gain. A good pattern run by Berzer. Once again, good pressure. You see a blitz up the middle picked up by Remington. Rulon Jones to the left. Knocking on the back helmet of uh, Anderson, but this is a fine throw. Berzer runs a good pattern. He makes the catch. The Bengals would like to include him more in the offense than he has been. Anderson, 14 for 31 for 181 yards. Intercepted one. 129 to play, third quarter. Bengals trailing by three. First and 10 at the 46-yard line of Denver. Anderson stands in. He gets the man. James Brooks turns up field and gets to the 40. Gain of six yards on the play. Dennis Smith comes over, hauls him down, and helps him up. There you see the ability of James Brooks. Carries it, catches passes, runs good patterns. That's that, uh, that very talent as opposed to the one dimension of Pete Johnson. There's another upset. Kansas City with Todd Blackledge at quarterback upsets the Steelers at Pittsburgh. The Bears open strong. That's the team that the Denver Broncos will be facing next week in Chicago. Green Bay under former Bengals coach Forrest Gregg opens with a win. Barely over St. Louis. Second and four, running with the ball is Charles Alexander, and the big orange defense throws him back. This is now the defense for power back to try. Now, one thing that the Bengals have not really tried an awful lot today has been any play action passing that I can think of. I mean, they haven't gone to that a great deal. That is, fake a run up the middle, kind of draw those linebackers up a step, and then throw it right behind them. Another big third down conversion here now down. Third and what, about four? Third down and three. Almost four. A long three just inside the 40-yard line. Collinsworth in the backfield. Linebacker coverage. He's going to Collinsworth. He eludes the tackler. It's a first down and much more as Collinsworth wisely protects the ball with both arms and takes it down inside the 25. Now they're going back to what they did in the first half as we come to the end of the third quarter. Collinsworth in the backfield. Anderson is looking only at Collinsworth. Collinsworth gets by that linebacker. He's the primary receiver. And that's a mismatch. Dennis Smith there to make the tackle, but he was not the man in coverage to begin with. The end of the third quarter, 13 to 10. The Denver Broncos in the lead will be back after these messages from your local city. We just had a conversation on the sideline Bengals offense and Sam White was talking to David Verser an awful lot. I think I'd look at David Verser here. I don't know what pattern he's going to run, but he was getting an awful lot of attention from Sam White. He's at the bottom of the screen. This is the opening play of the fourth quarter. Bengals and White trail by three, but they're driving. Anderson, the 14-year veteran, looks he has a man over the middle. It's his tight end, M.L. Harris. He's down to the 15-yard line before a wave of orange throws him back quite to the first down. Now back to New York in NFL 84. All right, Don, in Houston, Todd Christensen making his presence felt for the Raiders. His fourth reception set up this Marcus Allen TD run of one yard, but Chris Barr missed the extra point, so it is seven to six Houston. And you know, people have talked about the Oilers offense. Today, the story might well be the Houston defense. I'll tell you one thing, they haven't had much defense down there for a while. Not a number of years. That'll be welcome back. 
He's got a good one going at mile high. Don Quickie with Bob Tuffy, fourth quarter, hand up to Brooks with Darty moving. And second and two, it's going to be very close, but maybe not there. Tom Jackson again, that 11-year veteran. Now I'll make this comment. Uh, now the Bengals have had the ball unbelievable amount of time in this football game, and that Bengal offense looks very, very tired. Anthony Munoz has either pulled a muscle or is suffering from cramps, but uh, he and Max Montoya, all of those offensive linemen, are really trying to catch their breath as best they can. Anderson Bravo has trouble hitting his receivers at the outset, doing great parts of the fine defense of the Broncos, has now hit his last four passes. Let's see what he does on third and inches. First down, Charles Alexander puts his head down and gets to the 12. Don, you can see Anthony Munoz at the 15-yard uh, line. He's, he's hurting us. This is a young man who, uh, coming out of college, had only played 16 college football games and has not missed a game now as a professional. He's, uh, he's not 100%, that's for sure. Today's game is brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? By McDonald's, it's a good time for the great taste of McDonald's. And by Federal Express, that mail and exact copy delivered door to door in just two hours. First and 10, Cincinnati. Whoa, whoa, a good tip away. Nicely done. Steve Wilson was the man who got a hand on the ball. Bursar, the intended receiver, but Bursar appears to have, he should have come back with the football. He had good clearance against uh, Wilson, but he just stopped instead of coming back. See, this is almost picked up. Well, he does flip, I think, on uh, the turf a little bit. Bengals have been down close before, and the uh, Bronco defense has denied them. Last time they got down close, though, they took it in to get back in the game. Broncos leading by three. There's a throw. A tight end has a David Verzer coming off the flank. Cutting back, and Verzer has the ball at the goal line. So David Verzer, the man they've been waiting for, finally delivers two big catches in the second half of this game. What an athlete this kid is. Out of Kansas, their first pick, same year they took Chris Collinsworth. And since that draft, Joyce Collinsworth has had two seasons of 1,000 yards. And David Verzer has gotten very little, but he is a tough receiver. He's a very physical kid. And uh, one 200, and he's a lightning bolt running oh, the ball. He's a heck of an athlete. Point blank range. First and goal, Bengals, one yard line. Boom. Kinnebro didn't get there. Nothing. They're going to keep giving it to Kinnebro until he gets it right. He hasn't gained five yards all day. Well, he is a big fellow, and I want to tell you that, that, that Bronco defense once again submarining underneath there just trying for penetration wherever they possibly can and they're running behind Anthony Munoz and I made the point earlier he does not appear to be healthy as a matter of fact they're taking Munoz out now which is rather historic number 75 Bruce Reamers is coming in Munoz may have hurt his back this seems to be exhausted a consensus all pro player now second and goal hand off this time they go to Big Larry Kennebrew, and finally the big 252-pounder gets the needed yardage. It was only one, but it was in for the payoff. And the Bengals take a 16-13 lead with the extra point try coming. You don't think the injury to John Elway has taken some steam out of this football team? They take Munoz out, this time run to the right behind Max Montoya and Mike Wilson. Excellent blocking up front, good determination, and only the Bengals get one in there. It's been a while. Critical extra point. Jim Brees hits it. It means the uh, Broncos have to go down and score a touchdown. It will give the Bengals a four-point lead. He's got it. And so it's a 17-13 game. Cincinnati leads for the first time in the game with 11.42 left to play. Or excuse me, the Brees field goal at the outset gave him a 3-0 lead, but there's the big problem, the injury to John Elway. John Elway obviously in a lot of pain with that bruised left shoulder, badly bruised. One good report, the x-rays were negative. There's no fracture. But John Elway won't play again today, and right now the Broncos need a touchdown to get back on this. Here's a kickoff down to the three. 
Jack Thomas takes it to the 15, and good special teams play. Wait a minute, he loses it and gets out to the 25. They had Jack Thomas and lost him. So Kubiak and the Broncos go first and 10 from their 25, failing the Bengals 17 to 13. You know, that, that, that graphic we just had up, I, I can't ever remember a football game where one team has run twice the offensive plays that the other team has. But you can see the Denver Broncos are still trying. They're not about to give up. Zach Thomas, the gutty kid. Sure is. Now, first and 10 for Kubiak and the Broncos. Gets the throw, stands in, guns it out. Sawyer has it, marker down as Sawyer gets the head close to the 30. Got about five. But a marker down in the backfield. There's a holding call signaled against Denver. Eddie Edwards was coming on the bus. Now you see what happens. Elway goes out. There is no way to tell. Nobody's ever going to say exactly the impact that it has. Holding number 76, first down. But the offensive line now realizes that they're in a desperate situation. And they got to do anything to protect this guy. And they got to do anything to try to get points on the board quickly. It comes from your right. 76, Ken Lanier pulling down Eddie Edwards. Caught. Ken Lanier is a good offensive lineman. That's not necessary, but it just it takes some starch out of your shirt. You know, you're just out there, oh, you just don't feel like playing anymore when your quarterback gets hurt. First and 20 after the holding call against the Broncos. Kubiak stands in. Here comes Browner, dumps it off nicely. Winder has the ball on the block. Danny Winder gets back to lost yardage on the penalty, but it's still going to be now second down and 20. Now let's take a break and swing back to NFL 84 in New York. All right, Don, fourth quarter at the Hoosier Dome. Ron Stark punts for the Colts. Kirk Springs will attempt to return it for the Jets, but watch the hit he takes from Mark Kofensis. It'll knock the ball loose. The Colts recover. Moments later, Frank Middleton scores from three yards out. It's 16-14 Jets, 10 minutes to go in the fourth. Couple of good ones going. Thank you, Bob. We have 10.44 left to play here in Denver as Kubiak and the Broncos set up an offense. Second down and 10 at their 25. Back to the run. Lead guard is Howard. Good run moving up as the rookie from LSU. Gene Lang, who you remember, scored a touchdown for Denver earlier on a short run. Ray Horton knocked him down, but a 16-yard gain on the Bronco first down. Watch this play. Watch the work of the offensive line of the... Denver Broncos. Howard pulls, gets Cameron off his feet. They did an excellent job to the short side of the field, the weak side of the defense. Good 16-yard pickup. So Kubiak on what would seem to be a passing down goes to the run, and it works well as Howard got out in front. First and 10 Broncos at their 40. Here we go again. Right back this time it's Will Height. USC power sweep to the short side of the field. Gain of maybe four yards on the play. And the game clock ticks with 10-14 and running. Left to play in the game. Bengals led early, 3-0. And then Denver moved out to a 13-3 halftime lead. Short time ago, Sam Weiss's Bengals took the lead. And at the defensive coordinator, Dick LeBeau. Correct. in his wide right. Butch Johnson is wide left. They've both had big receptions in this game. Kubiak takes a look, throws on the run. Woo, a big play. Reggie Williams had the ball and almost an interception. That was very close, but once again, the observation that the Denver is being very conservative. They don't want to turn over if they can avoid it. Kubiak now four of seven for 30 yards. It seems to be a mix up there, but Williams able to get his hands up. And with good athletic ability, almost is able to pick that ball off. Big third down here, Don. Real big as we start now down into the last 10 minutes of the game. 17-13. Cincinnati's in the lead after trailing by 10 at the halftime. Kubiak throws a perfect strike to Butch Johnson. It's a first down for the Broncos. Ray Horton once again on the coverage. They've kind of picked on him today. He's the young man who took uh, Ken Riley's place, 11 yards on the reception by Butch Johnson, and Johnson was the inside receiver. Kubiak staying with him all the way. And Johnson just gave him a little wiggle at the break. 
three yards clearance, and Kubiak puts it right in there. Right. Dennis Senate. Manishin, Excellent. our NBC statistician, pointing out Kubiak has now hit five of eight for 41 yards. First down and 10. Broncos keep the drive alive. They need a touchdown. Kubiak running, firing, and does well to get rid of it low. They don't have another quarterback in uniform. Foley will have to go in because Bruner's not in uniform. Kubiak just got nailed by Guy Frazier right in the chin. This telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League. It is intended for the private use of our audience. And any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Denver Broncos and the National Football League is prohibited. 8.59 to play in the game. Don Quickie with Bob Trumpy. Mile High Stadium sold out for the 102nd time. 15 years in a row, the Bronco fans have packed this building to its fullest. John Elway, though, has to look down from the sidelines like a spectator after injuring his left shoulder. Swing pass from Kubiak. Gets it out to Sammy Winder, and the Broncos move on down to the 35-yard line. Very close to another Denver first down. And once again, that formation and motion Rick Rosano was the man in coverage. He was way behind Sammy Winder. Coming right at you. Well thrown by Kubiak. And we don't even see a Bengal defender yet. Finally, there he is. I have a feeling there was a pick there, a legal pick. And Rosano just caught in a wash. Coming out to cover Winder out of the backfield. Third and short. Last year, Kubiak was called on the start again against Seattle. Didn't find out he was going to start until that Sunday morning. Ordered back to victory. Now it's third down and one. Second effort. Boom, boom, yards. They come tough, but he got enough. It's a first down for Denver right into the gut of the Cincinnati defense. 8.40 to play and running. Fourth quarter. Bengals 17, Broncos 13. And another Cincinnati player is slow getting up. Boyarski, the middle guard. Keith Bishop to the sideline. Boyarski's going out and Crumrise coming in. Kubiak hands and Winder runs. Good defense coming up quickly to fill with Eddie Edwards. He made the first hit. Winder got ahead for two yards. It's going to be second down and eight now for Denver. Tough playing football right there in that skin part of uh, this football field. The stuff gets in your eyes. And Left footing. Yeah, scrapes you. You're right. Also left footing. This is the players, one of their favorite fields in the league, though. When it's when there's grass on that stuff. You're right. This is excellent. 7.38 to play. Clock running. Broncos need a touchdown. And here's Kubiak looking over the middle. Guns and he's got a strike. Coming off the flat. Making the big catch is Butch Johnson. Delivering again for his old coach from Dallas Stanley. Kubiak right on the money. Never any hesitation whatsoever. Winder out in the flat. You see Rodano 51 out of the coverage. They clear out everybody. Right on the money. Johnson's third catch now. 52 yards and that touchdown in the first half. So now it's the Cincinnati defense that must rise up as Kubiak has the Broncos moving. 655 to play. First down Bengals. First down Broncos. They trail the Bengals by four. Will Hunt dives and gets to the 12. Denver getting a couple of yards. That was all. Maybe three. Gerald Wilhite, sprinter from San Jose State. There's Scott Bruner sending in some signals. The third quarterback, but he can't do much in a golf shirt. No, he cannot. He wouldn't want to do much in a golf shirt either. Boy, the Broncos have had this ball for a long time. This has been a well-sustained drive. Real well. Opening day at Denver, always a football celebration. Another great game right now as we have a long time to go from a clock standpoint, 6.17, the way these QBs have used the clock. Look at that throw by Kubiak off the run. Did he catch it? But Johnson dove at the ball, and they say he got it. So it'll be third and short yardage now for the Broncos. Interesting pattern. All he did is run parallel to the line of scrimmage and then turn up. And what they're hoping is that the... Uh, the defensive coverage just kind of goes away from him. You can see that he's running straight up the field after going flat down the line of scrimmage. Interesting pattern. Butch Johnson, who spent his previous seven seasons at Dallas, was traded to Houston at a point.
poor summer training camp. Dan Lee's always knew what he could do at Dallas and traded for him. He's really delivered today in the opening game. Kubiak, look. by Gary Kubiak. There is no coverage on Kay whatsoever. Glenn Cameron, the closest one. Linebacker on tight end. It's supposed to work that way for the offense. Beautifully executed by the Denver Broncos. Well, you mentioned Butch Johnson. I have a feeling he's probably played more today than he ever did in one single game for the Dallas Cowboys. They got the point now. in the Cincinnati offense. They still have a lot of time. 5.26 left to play. We'll be back for the stretch run of a great game right after this. Don Quickie with Bob Truppy back at Denver where Gary Kubiak, the backup to injured John Elway, just engineered a 75-yard drive in 13 plays. The payoff and an 8-yard throw to a rookie tight end, Clarence K. So Kubiak and the Bronco offense the lead back for Denver. High spinning kickoff by Carlos. Simmons takes it at the two. John Simmons puts his head down and he is really stuck and it was the man who scored the touchdown. Clarence K, 88, who drilled him. They got some football players. John, that's the second touchdown that the uh, Broncos have scored on a third down play. Randy Robbins also on the staff, 48. Right now, there's a break in the action. We'll be back on the preview. All-pro Anthony Munoz exhausted by this long battle on the sideline. Bengal offense on the field. They rally from a 10-point halftime deficit to take a 17-13 lead. But now, the Broncos behind backup quarterback Gary Kubiak have driven down the field, and they've taken back the lead. With 5.15 to play, Cincinnati trails by three of strike to Collinsworth. And he's out to the 25-yard line. John, you mentioned Munoz on the sideline. His replacement, Bruce Reamers, 6'7", 280 out of Iowa State. He's not doing a bad job at all. It's a long way from the all-pro offensive tackle of the Cincinnati Bengals. Obviously, Charles Alexander helping as best he possibly can. Gain of nine on that throw. Collinsworth on the receiving end. Anderson and Collinsworth. One of the best pass-catch combinations in the NFL have been delivering all day. Bengals drive on now. Pitch back to rookie Stanford Jennings holds the ball against the onslaught of the Denver defense, knocking him down at the 28-yard line. But he got enough, it looks like, for a first down, or did he? We'll see where they spot the ball. Very close. Clock running. 4.19 left to go. We could go to overtime if the Bengals get it down and kick a field goal. He got the first down. Uh, the Bengals are going against the wind on. So that certainly is a factor. The wind has changed. Yeah. Coming out of the south now, very directly out of the south. Flag is straight out. The outset of the game was the complete opposite. There's a throw, a tip ball. Mercer was open, but Anderson under a tremendous rush. He Rulon, to get it away. Rulon Jones right in his face. That's Bruce Reamer the replacement. You can see on the Right-hand side of the screen, Steve Foley right up in there, too. Actually, I take it back. Reamers did an excellent job on Mecklenburg. I saw the wrong guy. Steve Foley in there. Been some bit part players with significant roles in this game, particularly for Denver. Backup receiver Butch Johnson playing his first game as a Bronco. Backup quarterback Gary Kubiak has helped rally this team to the lead. Anderson throws a football in. Dennis Smith almost with an interception for the Broncos. Blitz all over the place. Bengals very lucky. Now a big down for Anderson and the Bengals. Third down and ten coming up. You see the pressure once again up front. It was intended for ML Harris. Smith right in front of it. Anderson, I believe, had to throw that ball early because of the pressure. You have two receivers passing right in front of each other. You don't want that in a 
Bengals line of any third and ten Cincinnati Bengals trailing by three late in the game Anderson looks he throws Alexander has it but he doesn't have enough and there's a penalty marker down there's going to be a holding call against the Cincinnati Bengals they have to hold rule on Jones to keep him out the big man from Utah State That's exactly what it was holding Cincinnati Bengals. Jones is just out of the picture to your right. There he is on Smith, 62. I'm not sure we're going to be able to pick up the holding. Well, there's Reamer, 75 on Mecklenburg, 77. Holding number 75, declined, fourth down. So the Bengals, understandably, be the Broncos decline the penalty, and Cincinnati will have to punt. No, they don't have any choice. they got to go for it here, Don. Yeah, they do. I guess with 3.45 to go, they're going to go for it. They're cooked if they don't get there, though. Steve Kreider in the ball game for the first time. Denver takes a timeout, thinking that the Bengals would go with the punt. I would think so, too. I'll be interested to see if they don't just line up and wait for 30 seconds to see if they don't jump offside. We'll be back after this. Motion running high in Denver, Colorado. This crowd buoyed by opening day and a brilliant showing by John Elway hits the ground like a lead balloon when Elway went out with an injury. Now they've come back behind backup quarterback Gary Kubiak to take the lead and now the veteran Kenny Anderson with a fourth and four play for the Bengals. Cincinnati trailing by three. Here's the rush. There's the throw. It's a first down to M.L. Harris. He's not gotten a lot of business today with all of the attention to the outside receivers all day long. Denver seemed to just... Who called that play? You got it, Coach. We uh, chose uh, receivers here during the commercial. I took Collinsworth. I took Harris. We got them both, though. Big first down conversion. Third down, fourth down conversion, excuse me. Yeah, that's even bigger. Bengals. Here's the blitz. They pick it up. Anderson has the top, and now he goes down to the 25 yard line. And I'll tell you what, Don, coming into this ball game, I don't think even the Denver Broncos expected to get to the quarterback as uh, well as they have today. That's their third sack. They've done it with games up front. Two of the three sacks have come, though, since Nunez went out. He was suffering from cramps and exhaustion. Munoz sideline. Reamer. In an offensive tackle, an untried player who's done well for the most part, but Rulon Jones is a load to handle. He's teed up at the top side of your screen, Rulon Jones. Here's the throw. Ball is caught. First down, Chris Collinsworth inside the 35-yard line. And with 2.36 to play, the Bengals on a 24-yard gainer are almost in field goal range. That's got to drive Joe Collier nuts. <laughs> this is a double rotation zone. There's no way Collinsworth gets above that corner and underneath that safety. That is just poor execution. Somebody didn't get somewhere. Collinsworth, his eighth catch of the day for 107 yards. Boy, that's it. Whoa. Couldn't have come at a worse time, very obvious. But at 31, Harden is supposed to be over there to make sure that Collinsworth doesn't catch that pass. What a game. 2.36 to play. Cincinnati with a first down, trailing by three. It's 20 to 17, Denver Broncos. Here's a throw in the flat. Really a big play by the defense. Action Jackson, Tom Jackson, the 11-year veteran from Louisville, the three-time pro bowler, knocked the ball down and very nearly had an interception. Has always played the weak side of this defense. Joe Collier figuring the weak side of the offense is uh, going to be the pass side. And Jackson has always been excellent in coverage. He was right on Stanford Jennings there. They talked Trump about a few fiery players inspiring a whole defense, and Tom Jackson is certainly one of those. His role is a lot bigger this year with Dreddishar being gone. Second and 10, 2.32 to play. Ball at the 33-yard line of Denver. Here's the pitch. They go to the run. Oh, oh. Broncos have it. Denver recovers. Of 
celebration in Denver, but I'd like to say right now at 2.26 to play, it ain't over yet, even though Denver has the ball. Denver comes with the blitz. 58 Busick strips the ball away from Charles Alexander, generally very sure-handed. And Denver comes up with the big play, offensively and defensively. The phrase applied to this Denver team, big play today. Cincinnati with three timeouts remaining. So now it's up to the Bengal defense to shut down Kubiak in the offense and get the ball back. Shut down number one, but the clock runs, 2.20 to play. The Broncos going to huddle at their leisure as Cincinnati elects not to call one of its three timeouts here. I would say now they do. That's, that's right. You they call a timeout to... now. Why 15 seconds in? Well, because then it's going to stop again at the two-minute warning. You're going to get one extra stop that you won't be charged for. You get this one. They give you the second one. Thank you. That's you why we brought you left. here. <laughs> That's why you came. Now, this has been a superb effort by the Denver Broncos, regardless of outcome. The Bengals have not played particularly well offensively and defensively. Now, the Broncos, on the other hand, have really played very, very well. I'm not sure their defense can play any better than they played today. Alley deep in thought. Coach Sam White wanted to show the Bengals how he wanted people to dress on the road. He illustrated that by showing people how not to dress. He had the assistant coaches dressed up. Jim McNally, the offensive line coach, dressed up in the suit of a guy who weighs 400 pounds. One of the other coaches wore McAnally's coat that he had at Harvard. He's been wearing for eight years. There is Sam White. He's put a little age on in his first game in the NFL. You are absolutely correct. Dan Reeves won his opener as a rookie NFL head coach. Gary Kubiak does not have the rocket arm that can throw a ball through a car wash without getting wet, as they say Elway can, but Kubiak is savvy and gutty. He's led this team down the field in that 75-yard drive not long ago as the Bengals gave up the lead they had. The Broncos coming back to take a 20-17 to lead. Now they're trying to move the sticks and get more time to run out the clock. More down. Here's a throw. Boyer has it. Big defensive play. A hard strike by Robert Jackson, a free safety out of Central Michigan. And now with the two-minute mark on the clock, a timeout is signaled for by the officials. That motion all day long has really caused the Bengals problems. And there you see Sawyer in motion. Good tackle by Jackson. Again this year, we're going to be treated to some of the most exciting finales in NFL history. They're called fantastic finishes, and here's one of them. Well, we've had a lot of football for 58 minutes. We've got two minutes more to go, and the best may be yet to come. Don Crickey with Bob Trumpy, Mile High Stadium. The Broncos holding to a three-point lead. It does appear that the Bengals are going to get the ball back with some amount of time left on the clock. Although right now, the Broncos can pretty much do whatever they want. From the shotgun, I look for a sweep by Winder or a screen. Kubiak on the run. He looks. Throws. Incomplete. And so with 1.54 left to play, the Broncos have to punt the ball back. And you'll recall late in the second quarter, Kenny Anderson took the Bengals 75 yards all the way down to the three-yard line with 1.38 to go. And, and they, they couldn't score. And they have two timeouts left. And, of course, the uh, Broncos are going to be in a prevent defense, which does give the Bengals a certain advantage to get it to a certain point. Although the Broncos are protecting a three-point lead. John Simmons is the man back deep, point five. Chris Norman, the rookie, will punt the ball for the Broncos. Kept it high. Good punt.